You're listening to the New Artist Workshop. your favorite podcast. Now that's what I call a franchise. I'm Peter Mancuso. And I'm Viviana Metzger. And this is the show where Peter and I pick a film franchise and go through every single installment. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And to be clear, I don't know how many more times I have to say this. (laughs) Some some of you don't understand. Oh my goodness. We are defining a franchise as a series of films with at least four entries. So, Viviana, what are we talking about today? Today we are talking about the 1984 film Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. And this is your one and only spoiler warning, so if you haven't watched the movie, do that before listening to the episode. Okay. But I'm pretty sure you you have. Cause... I don't know who would listen to this if they haven't if they yeah. haven't watched it. Cuz well cuz they would have to be like filmy people, right, you know. Yeah. They would have to, you know, let us let us know who you are. Yeah. Send us your address and a photo. <laughs> Social security number would be good, too. And $10, yeah. (laughs) No. (laughs) Honestly, just comment on our social media, like, uh, I don't know. Your experience with film. (laughs) Like, would you consider yourself a casual viewer or or, or a a go-getter? I want more, I want to know more, like, demographics. Well, if you feel comfortable. Age, race, ooh, height. Height? Yeah, you know. Well, you can find Oh, really? Yeah. Don't be creepy, though. Oh, okay. I'm going to be very <laughs> creepy. Okay. This is what this is uh, what uh, the blurb is on Letterboxd. Here's what the word is on the street. <laughs> After arriving in India, Indiana Jones is asked by a desperate village to find a mystical stone. He agrees and stumbles upon a secret cult plotting a terrible plan in the catacombs of an ancient palace. Does he stumble, though? It's well known that they're there. Well, but he doesn't know to the extent of, like, how fucked up everything is. I guess so, yeah. Right? Um, So here's some basic info. So once again, directed by Steven Spielberg, um, who at this point, we uh, last week we talked about uh, the films he had done before the first Raiders, uh, before the first Indiana Jones film. Um, Since then, he's only, he had only directed Mm. E.T. So only one film, but kind of a major one in, in terms of his filmography oh, um, yeah. hugely um, you know huge box office success I think it became like the highest grossing film of all time mm-hmm. like at that time uh, critical acclaim I think it was nominated for an Oscar oh wow and then he goes on to do this <laughs> but but we're gonna get there we're gonna get there hey this one's important for history too it is no it's very it's definitely interesting like his like filmography and kind of like the trajectory he takes yeah. um, well do you have the thing about the rating I do, I do have a thing about the ranks. <laughs> yeah. Don't you worry. We will get into it. Um, so it was written by, not by Lawrence Kasdan, who wrote the first film. Uh, uh, he had also written, we talked about this last week, he also wrote, or was what was one of the co-writers for The Empire Strikes Back. So Lawrence Kasdan, you know, cut his teeth, you know, <laughs> like has proven himself. I, I think it shows. Well, that's the thing. It was written by <laughs> Willard Huck. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Willard Huck? Hewick? Hewick? Uh, and his wife, Gloria Katz. They're a screenwriting duo. Oh. Um, they co-wrote American Graffiti with, with George Lucas. Uh, um, and co-wrote isn't quite accurate. Also this was, with Ford. Also with... Well, it's, it's all part of like that Lucasfilm, incestual. Like everyone's network. working on everything. It's a network. Um, well, what's interesting about them is that... Uh, you know, George Lucas is, as we know, is not a particularly good writer. He's a great ideas guy. Yeah. American Graffiti is one of the most humanistic, like, natural... Like, it's one of my favorite movies ever. Mm-hmm. It, it, I've always wondered, how did George Lucas write something so, like, human? <laughs> the fact is, he didn't. He wrote it, and then was like... Went to his friends, Willard Huck, Huck, Huck and Gloria Katz, and was like, I'm struggling with the script. Can you guys do, like, a pass of it? 
and you wake up. So they co-wrote it, but it's not like they were the three of them were sitting in a room together. Yeah, yeah. So, but they injected a lot of like the the like the memorable parts of that movie, and the two of them actually did uncredited. Um, edits to the original Star Wars script what? and infused a lot of humor that wasn't in it before. <laughs> the original, if you read like, the, the, we're on a tangent, but if you read like the original Star Wars script, yeah. it reads like the prequels. Like uh, long, boring, drawn out. Everyone's <laughs> like, no one talks like a real person. It's yeah. all still like, so they, they are, I think, good writers in general, but you're seeing a theme here where it's like, brings a lot more levity, bring a little bit yeah. more humor. Yeah. And that definitely shows here. Not to say that the other, that, you know, uh, the first Indiana Jones film wasn't funny. Uh, yeah. And furthermore, I feel like Empire Strikes Back has some of the best humor in the Star Wars <laughs> franchise. Yeah. But but it's a different style. It, yeah, it definitely... It's more like an understated humor. Yeah, as opposed it, to this it is definitely like, shows in this film. But, but we'll, we'll get to it. I'm, I'm putting the cart before the horse here. Uh, it was distributed once again by Paramount Pictures. Uh, it was released in May of 1984. Uh, the, it was a budget of $28 million, um, and it grossed about $333 million, uh, which sounds like a lot, but this was the lowest of the franchise. Good. I think... I think um, That's a lot of money. I believe, like, before or since. Huh? It was the, It's the lowest of the, of the franchise. Really? Even... The fourth one is is small. Well, don't forget with the fourth one coming out, you know, uh, about th- maybe thirty or so years after this, inflation is obviously different. Well, so yeah. movies like newer movies are always going to just make more money inherently, no, know, just because it, it costs just, more money to. No, I mean if you if you. You mean like the percent. You like, in like, terms of like, like if you fix the inf- like the inflation for it to both. Yes, be- the percent. Yes, so it made less money. Than the fourth film, hmm. but per se, well, talk about putting the cart before the horse. The fourth, <laughs> the fourth one is the highest grossing one. What? But in terms of the percent return, it's the lowest. <laughs> These numbers are very skewed. <laughs> well, it's the thing is, is that the 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 uh, film. Well, they they had a bigger budget. And so... Well, that's the thing, yeah. The, the fourth one was made... Well, the, to, put, huge, to put this into context... Huge budget, the, To put into context, the first film was made for $20 million. Yeah. Uh, the fourth one was made for $185 million. Oh, yeah. So, um, that movie was made for almost double the amount, or it should be almost ten times the amount. Yeah. But only made about double the box office. Do you know what I mean? So, so it made more money, but in terms of like the percent return, it didn't lose money. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a flop by any means. No, no, no. It made like six hundred million dollars of profit, mm-hmm. but it, it, in terms of like what it cost, uh, it wasn't necessarily like the best return. Well, they're all in the millions, so. It's so, someone's sleeping tonight in a mansion, <laughs> so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> um. So, um, Vivian, what is your previous experience with? With the film, like you, you had seen this before, yeah. right? But how is it in terms of like the other films? Like, how often did you watch this one? Uh, I don't know. I know, I know, I've seen it maybe a few times. Um, I know at least once, <laughs> but maybe like two or three times. Um, because I, I think it used to come on like cable or something. Mm-hmm. Um. Or maybe we had the VHS. I don't know. But I, I remember watching it with my mom. And when they were doing the ritual, <laughs> she always made me close my eyes. And I was so I was so ticked off because I was like, why why can't I see this? Like, I'm already watching the movie. And <laughs> and she she was like, you want to know what happens? And she told me what happens. And I was like, maybe I don't want to see that. <laughs> um, mm. So I, I know it from that scene it's that movie you know yeah Mm -hmm. um so yeah ritual temple of doom yeah i i had seen this i think i've seen this not counting this time i think i've seen this like a grand total of one time i think i watched it once when i was a kid i kind of talked about this last week but um they re-released all of like the three of them i think Mm -hmm. like when the fourth one was coming out and that's i think when i got the dvd Uh, of the first one and i think i also got the second one Mm -hmm. but not the third one um i don't know i guess my parents were like only two for you (laughs) well Um, probably because of the the nature of the (laughs) no but why this one and not the other one 
This one's way more dark than the third no. one is. Oh, wait. Oh, this is only the second. This is the second. Oh. Why would we have skipped? If there's another second one, why, why would we have skipped no, it and watched I, this one? Okay, to be fair, it's been a, it's been a little bit since we've done another one. And so uh, I thought we were on the third movie. <laughs> no, we've only watched, this is the second one. Then what's, what's the third one? The Last Crusade. Oh, with, with his the, dad, with, um, with Sean Connery Sean playing Connery. his father. Yes, I thought that one was second. No, because it's like you know, it's more similar to the first one. No, I think I think that's it's more similar to the first one because this one didn't really do that well, <laughs> and they were like, let's return to form. Let's return. But um, I'd seen this once, and I remember not really caring for it, even as a kid. I and I wasn't I was not afraid of it at all. Mm. Um, I don't know why. I mean, I understand watching it now. I feel like, again, this is somewhat of a tangent. I feel like when you get older, you'll see things and be like, oh, I can't, like, kids shouldn't look at this or watch this or or hear this or write. Yeah. But then you think about when you were a kid and yeah. you were like, well, I could have, like, I could have handled it when I was 10. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so many things, like, now I'm like, oh, like, they, they can't watch that movie. It's too violent. I was like, I was watching more violent things at a younger age than, like, whatever <laughs> kid in question. Yeah. So with this movie, I don't remember being afraid of it at all. Like, I don't have any traumatic... I probably watched it when I was... If if, the, if those DVDs came out in 2007 at the earliest, because the fourth sure. one came out in 2008, sure. I would have been, like, 10 or 11. Yeah. So maybe I was older. Maybe if I was, like, 6 or 7. Maybe. The way I was kind of scared of the first one when I saw it when I was, like, 6 Why or 7. Why scared of the first one? Because <laughs> there's scary, like, skeletons and screaming, and if you're, like, 6... Oh, well, I, I have seen The Goonies, so I'm used to pop-out skeletons. Um, a classic. Something I thought was going to be a much bigger <laughs> problem when I was a kid. Yeah, Quicksand, r- r- rickety bridges, oh. amnesia. These are all things I thought were going to be a bigger problem you know when what? I was a Those kid growing up. Those rickety bridges are scary and they're hard to walk on. <laughs> I've been on one and it's, it's it yeah. not fun. Was it as long as the one in this movie? Because that one's like, it feels like it's no, like a mile long. I don't think so. It, it was probably shorter, but it was it was a distance, you know. I, I can't was... remember if I put this in my trivia, but I was reading that Steven Spielberg is very afraid of heights. Uh-huh. So when they felt that was a real bridge, that wasn't a fake. That was like oh. a real. They, they they built it just for this, but it was a real bridge, and he was so afraid to cross it that he would like he would drive and it would take like a mile and a half to get to the other side to drive, <laughs> which isn't very long. But he would get in his car and drive. Harrison Ford had no such. Fears and he would like run across it and yeah. like be funny and whatever. <laughs> he he seems pretty fearless for the most part, except for, except for that weird thing with snakes. Out of all the things, yeah. to well, I'm talking about Harrison Ford, like the human, not well, the yeah. character. Idea well, Jones. true, but I don't know. But wait, so that was like real, like on a cliff, or like real as in the Wizards of Waverly Place movie? It where, was real. Where it, there was like a foot and and no, I think it was mat. real. I think it was real as real could be. There was no, there was no blue mat. No, they didn't have those back then. At least not in like, no. So no. what happens if they fall? You don't fall. They make sure they build it so they don't fall, I guess. <laughs> um, But yeah, I remember not really caring for it. And I think I even like traded in the DVD. Like I didn't even care. <laughs> like that was much I didn't. I, it wasn't even like I dislike. I just like was like, whatever. And that's kind of how I feel now. I'm just kind of like, yeah. whatever. Um, but we'll, we'll get into our thoughts. I want to give you a little bit of background on it, on the making of this. Sure, sure. Um, so... Spielberg later recalled that when Lucas first approached him for Raiders of the Lost Ark, George said, if I directed the first one, then I would have to direct a trilogy. He had three <laughs> stories in mind. It turned out George did not have three stories in mind, and we had to make up the subsequent stories. What? <laughs> Both men later attributed the film's tone, uh, which was darker than the first film, to their personal moods following the breakups of their relationships. George Lucas was going through an infamous divorce from Marsha Lucas, um, famous editor... Um, who basically saved Star Wars, the first Star Wars movie, from being horrible. Um, and I don't think he... I think he had already been... Spielberg, I think, had already been divorced, but he was dating... Um, I think he was in a rela- like a romantic relationship. I don't think he was married to her. And then oh, they broke up. He, I think he, ha- he has a new wife now. Or, well, well, now, well, but, yeah, and her name is... And, and she's Willie in this movie. He marries oh. Willie. <laughs> oh, you're thinking George Lucas. Is, yeah, you, wait, didn't you say Marsha Lucas? I said he got divorced. No, yeah, what and you, then st- and I said separately, Stephen was also going through a breakup. I know. I know. What What is ex wife's name? Marsha. What? No, George Lucas's ex wife is Marsha Lucas. You're thinking of George Lucas got remarried. Okay, you <laughs> to a really cool lady. Do you see how 
I that I got confused no. because it, it was so strenuous. I thought that he was still Luke or uh, George. No, I said and then Steven. There's no he. Anyway. Anywho. Uh, you you got you gotta learn to listen. You gotta put your <laughs> rabbit ears on. Okay. Unless you know people listening to this ha- are able to rewind and listen to exactly what I said, so I'm either right or I'm wrong, and maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> Uh, in addition, so basically they were both going through breakups. So you know when you go through breakup and you just make angsty things. But and this... is, is that truly necessary? No, I, I, did, did you hear me say and that's necessary? I don't know. <laughs> I just, that's just why. <laughs> I'm just saying Indiana Jones has a brand. So like if some if the CEO of H&M, like H&M goes through a breakup or a divorce, you think they're just going to change all their clothes to black and like. Well, to be fair, the first one isn't really like a walk in the... It's not really a picnic either. Like, it's also pretty intense, pretty dark. The Nazis are... The, you know, the na- the Nazi and Well, I guess... You know? Okay, I guess because of, like, the dark magic it makes it, like... It's more yeah, like... Well, it's more like magic. evil. That's the thing. It's more like... It's evil more like magic. disturbing. Yeah. That's the problem. This, this one is, like... It was... The first one was definitely a little bit graphic. Like, when the guy gets his... <laughs> Get stuck in the plane propeller, um, but I feel like this one has the a tone lot. was different because when that happened, it was like fun adventure music was still going on in the background. Whereas <laughs> yeah, now, where he was like beating the enemies, whereas like this, I feel like has a lot of like different uh, kind of gross things. It may not, it may not be gross. It's more like unsettling than anything. But it, it yeah, it's just like such an overload. And that may not be true for, like, everyone, but I feel like for American audiences especially, like, monkey brains and then a a shit ton of bugs in a cave. And then she's got to stick her hand in the little thing with all the goop and, like, you can see the man melting. Like, you can, you get a close up of the man pulling his heart out of his chest. Like, it's a lot. I I also, I also saw this when I was doing my research for trivia and I can't remember can't remember what it said. I didn't write it down. But Gloria Katz, again, who's one of the screenwriters, yeah. wrote, like, kind of commented on this kind of thing about oh. it being darker and then going to break up or whatever. And she was like, you know, knowing George and Steven, like, they're kind of like kids at heart. So something's <laughs> going to be gross. It has to be, like, the grossest. Yeah. Like, they're basically just like kids. It's yeah. like, how gross can we make this? <laughs> um, but even if they weren't going through breakups, Lucas... Lucas felt that it had, quote, it had to have been a dark film. The way Empire Strikes Back was the stark second act of the Star Wars trilogy, end Mm. quote. Spielberg had said, quote, the danger in making a sequel is that you can never satisfy everyone. If you give people the same movie with different scenes, they say, why weren't you more original? But if you give them the same character in another fantastic adventure, but with a different tone, you risk disappointing the other half of the audience who just wanted a carbon copy of the first film with a different girl and a different bad guy. So you win and lose both ways. Um... (laughs) Lucas set the film in an earlier year than the first to avoid repeating the use of Nazis as the villains. I think they really wanted to try something different. Yeah. And I give George Lucas which in general fine. credit. Like, he always wants to try something different. Yeah, which is Even fine. if it's always not like, good. Yeah, there's, like, I feel like there's a lot of options in, like, the 50s or, when, you know, whenever he's doing his adventures because, like, okay, yeah, the Nazis. But there's, like, you know, other stuff going yeah. on in the world. <laughs> which is weird because the Nazis existed in 1935. I mean, Hitler became Chancellor but, of Germany in 1933. But, so. they, but they weren't, like, Nazis. They were, they, like... No, they were. No, I know, but they were a political party. They weren't, like, rummaging through people's homes. It, yes, they were. 1930... Yes, by 1935, yes. What? Yes. Oh, they, wait. Hitler came to power in 1933. Holocaust? When was the Holocaust? During World War II. Like, well, I mean, basically, it starts right at the... I mean, you could say 1933, basically. But what? truly, World War II. But, but I mean... Is- <laughs> like the 1939 to 1945. Okay. But my my point this is really not relevant at all. But my just point is that that the Nazis existed and they were they were Nazis as we imagine Nazis to be. No. By 1935, yeah, Hitler the Nazis were in power I starting know, but 1933. It was just a political party at first. But they immediately as soon as he gets to the power, he's doing the si- This is not the history podcast. <laughs> Well, okay, that's what I learned in Once in they take power, class. then they... Yes, they were a political party, and then they took power. Yes. yes and yes. then in 1933! Damn. Yep. Oh, my God. Anyway. <laughs> just, just, just... You don't have to shout. <laughs> I don't... Anyway. In developing the story, 
Lucas conceived of an opening chase sequence with Indiana Jones on a motorcycle on the Great Wall of China, <laughs> followed by the discovery of a, quote, lost world pastiche with a hidden valley inhabited by dinosaurs. What? However, Chinese authorities refused, refused permission for them to film in the country, requiring a different setting. Lucas wrote a film treatment that included a haunted castle in Scotland, but Spielberg felt uh, it was too similar to Poltergeist, which I think he had just made. Mm-hmm. Uh, he didn't direct that, but he produced it. I think he, like, essentially directed it. Like, he wasn't officially the director, yeah. but he basically was, like, on set every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the setting transformed into a demonic temple in India. Lucas came up with ideas that involved a religious cult devoted to child slavery, black magic, and ritual human sacrifice. You know, as you do. <laughs> Lawrence, Lawrence Kasdan of Raiders of the Lost Ark was asked to write the script. Uh, and here's a quote from him. I did not want to be associated with Temple of Doom. Ooh. He reflected. I just thought it was terrible. It's so mean. There's nothing pleasant about it. I think Temple of Doom represents a chaotic period in both of their lives, meaning Lucas and Spielberg. Yes. And the movie is very ugly and mean-spirited. <laughs> so therefore, Lucas hired Willard Hyuk and Gloria Katz to write the script because of their knowledge of Indian culture. What Indian culture oh, really? these two white people have, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Maybe they took a trip one time and... Of, and <laughs> In the 80s, that was knowing a lot about India. It was like going to <laughs> India once, well, maybe. There, I don't know. There wasn't no internet. Uh, in tradition of Lucas being really creepy, because if we remember last time, George Lucas wanted, uh, India, like in 10 years earlier, Indiana Jones' his relationship to have been with a 13-year-old girl. And everyone was like, no, we're not doing that. In this, was Lucas is... No, the, the idea is that that's when they had the relationship 10 oh, years ago. Oh, yes, yes, yes. In this movie, <laughs> Lucas's initial idea for Indiana sidekick was a virginal young princess. Oh. But Hyuk, Katz, and Spielberg disliked this idea. <laughs> Very good. Uh, the first draft was written in six weeks um, in early August 1982. Steve was coming off um, an enormously successful movie, which was E.T., and George didn't want to lose him. Uh, so this is coming from Gloria Katz. <laughs> he desperately wanted him to direct Temple of Doom, so we were under a lot of pressure to do it really, really fast so we could hold on to Steve. So the script may or may not have had the development why, that it... Why Why did they act like he was going to go away? Aren't they? Well, the movie was so successful, they were worried about him getting signed on to another project or something. Oh, okay, okay. You know, because if he has something that's obviously... They, they work together a lot, so it's like, why would they... Well, if something else comes up, though, that, and if they're just if they're just waying around working on the script for months and months, years and years, <laughs> you know what I mean? So. Like, you you yeah. know, you want you don't want to just be sitting around in passive opportunities for yeah. something that may or may not even happen. You also, know what I mean? I, I think the first... It wasn't guaranteed they were going to make this into a franchise. You know what I mean? Like No, I know, but just like, I don't know. I, I would figure you would want to keep up, I don't know, with your buddy George. But um, I like the first idea... Uh, a little bit, like, not the dinosaurs part, that's a little out there, but the whole, like, motorcycle on the Great Wall of China, I feel like that would be, like, a, a good opening shot or whatever. But I, I'm surprised that... Those damn communists wouldn't let them film there. <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't let them film, so... Why didn't they... You know what, they, they could have... I don't think they wanted them filming an action scene of an American hero. Or, or anyone. Well... Driving on the ancient Great Wall of China. Which probably a huge tours of things. Okay. I don't know if they There's pay. There's like thousands of people there every day. They're not riding on a motorcycle. Still, the foot traffic will do some. You, <laughs> you can always do repairs, like with the Trevi Fountain. You're arguing with me about the Nazis. I'm not You're arguing. You're arguing with me about the Great Wall of China. I don't fucking know about the Great Wall of I China, am not dude. Like arguing with you. I'm just bringing up these points. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess, you know, they were in a very tumultuous situation back then, so it makes sense. But why didn't they keep it in China and just build a set? I don't know. Probably because it would be a really long set. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. The filmmakers were denied permission to film in North India. Uh, <laughs> due to the government finding the script offensive, understandably. Oh! oh. <laughs> Uh, producer Frank Marshall explained that, quote, Originally, the scenes were going to be shot in India at a fantastic palace. They required us to give them a script, so we sent it over, and we didn't think it was going to be a problem. But because of the voodoo element with Mola Ram and the thuggies, the Indian government was a little bit hesitant to give us permission. They wanted us to do things like not use the term Maharaja, and they didn't want us to shoot in a particular temple that we had picked. The Indian government wanted changes to the script and final cut privilege. Uh, end quote. As a result, location work went to Candy Sir- S- Sri-, 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 Sri Lanka with map paintings and scale models applied for the village, temple, and Pancot Palace. Interesting. And I can kind of understand because the movie is 
It, I mean, obviously, it there's there's the good Indians and there's the bad Indians, but it's still not very very representative of I think what India wanted to be seen as. Yeah, it's very... Uh, and the fact that they separate them, like, here's the good ones, and then here's the yeah, bad the ones. Yeah, the sellouts. The sellouts to the British, basically. Yeah, yeah like... Because <laughs> they come in to save them. Um, very interesting. Also, why are they called the Fuggies? I don't know. Like, maybe that's a group of... Maybe that's a real group. I don't know. Oh, maybe. I didn't do that in my research. I no, sure I know. It just up. sounds like a funny name for a thug. Like, <laughs> You're a thuggy? <laughs> yeah, thuggies. <laughs> you know what thuggies wear when they go to bed? Snuggies. Snuggies. Anyway, I'm being very cultural. If that's a real group, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> so let's talk about what let's, let's talk about what we thought. So of course, I wrote my chronological notes as I always do. Just basically, we're just gonna go through the whole movie. Why watch it when you can hear me recount it? <laughs> sure, sure. Probably right. So, um, this movie starts off the way every great action movie should with a musical number. Wait. Oh. What? Oh, your notes. You you don't. Okay. I was looking at the trivia, sorry. This is not very... The flow of this is awful. You can just cut it. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start Let's start this action movie the way every great action movie should. With an elaborate musical number. Musical um, number. And, and it's not just a musical number like, oh, they're in a club performing. It's clearly non-diegetic. Because at one point they go to a, a void. Yeah. <laughs> a magical void. <laughs> With with American singers and dancers. Yeah, because when they're on stage, it's with Chinese dancers, and then I I didn't think she was white at first, but the, but I guess the the white actress for some reason singing. Well, she's the main character, Shanghai. so she's I guess she's well, a. Why why could why couldn't he fall in love with a Chinese woman? Well, that's what I was gonna say is, <laughs> of course she can't be Chinese. Or why you know. why can't all the other dancers be? be Chinese. It'd be it would it would make more sense if they were all different races. Like like this was a kind of like a weird melting pot where like a bunch of cultures meet. Yeah, and, like, I think I think that is. But they're all Shanghai. Chinese. Yeah, Shanghai is like usually Yeah. you know. So maybe that's kind of like the idea. She's supposed to be like kind of like an expat. Like she's just like doesn't live yeah. in the United States anymore. Um but I think this it's opening never sequence it is it is never addressed uh why she's there. She even, just <laughs> even <laughs> even though it is addressed why uh, he was there. Yeah. Well, because she's a famous... She's meant to be a famous singer. Because someone even says, like, when they're yeah, getting on that plane... Yeah, So why is she just singing in, like, a sleazy bar? Run by the Chinese mom. Yeah, Wait. like, why... <laughs> anyway. But I think this opening scene really encapsulates the movie in the sense of... It just... It's just a movie that... It doesn't make me mad. It just makes me ask a lot of questions. <laughs> it's just confusing more than anything else, right? It's, I wouldn't say it's a bad movie. Spoiler alert. I don't think this is a bad movie. <laughs> But it wow, just it's just from a the harsh critic. It's just a strange it's just strange. All these decisions. It is very strange. The the sequence of events and, mm-hmm. and the events themselves sometimes. Um <laughs> I also find it very funny. Um <laughs> when the title comes up. Yeah. She's it's like She's blocking it. I think they were just excited to show like the technology, like, ooh, we can composite <laughs> this where like it's it's in between objects. Yeah. But she's blocking the of <laughs> Also, Temple Doom. Also, why is she singing the song th- in, Chinese. in Chinese, but then saying anything goes in English? When you oh, just, she does. Yeah. What it, <laughs> like, we can tell by the music. Why? Why? <laughs> why can't you sing that in Chinese too? I don't know. Um. So so this film takes place in 1935. Yes. Um. So we, we talked about before. So it's technically a prequel. Uh. So which is very. Which I, we were watching it. Viviana did not know that. And I was explaining that she was like, what? Like, <laughs> I didn't notice. <laughs> I didn't notice the, well, I, I just kind of disregard the, the years. I'm bad with years, if you hadn't noticed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's interesting. So not only like for the Nazi reason, but mm-hmm. I think another reason why they did that is just like, well, first off, George Lucas is no stranger. Just like, you know, he made a movie called episode four. <laughs> He didn't start with one. He started with four. Okay. But okay. You could have had a sequential movie without the Nazis. No, but my point be. No, yeah, I know. That's that's. I don't know I why. Could have gone to Costa Rica I think the or idea something. is basically just like it doesn't matter. The chronology doesn't matter because they're not really all connected. It, the only it just w- is. It's like things. Things. What is it like? Like Scooby Doo or something. It's just, it's, it it's, just it's, happens. It's it's very episodic. Yeah. <laughs> it's it, it. They're not really meant. The only movie that really calls upon other movies is the fourth one. Yeah. Mostly the the fourth one mostly is a is a sequel to the first one with references to the third one. 
because they talk yeah. about his father. I don't think there are any references to this movie at all no. in the fourth one. I could be mistaken, but um, yeah. so it is technically a prequel, which is but interesting. By, by that, sorry, but by that time, I, at first when I watched it, I was confused as to who the lady was and their connection, but because that was three movies ago. <laughs> Oh, yeah, in the fourth one, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, they bring her back. The idea no, is that... I know, yeah. the, But that was their point. Like, Spielberg and Lucas even talked about, like, like... Their whole point was, like, every time it's a new adventure, new new lady, new bad guy, like, it's always meant to be, like, James a different... Bond. By then, that's kind of, like, the idea. Well, he's kind of James Bond in this opening bit. Well, yeah. Which yes, is really he, weird. He does and look I look very snazzy in his I, But I kind of don't like it because it doesn't feel like Indiana Jones. I don't he, just mean... He's rugged. I don't, But I don't mean because he's not dressed like Indiana Jones. I don't mean, like, superficially. <laughs> I just mean, like, it, it just stylistically, like he's acting different. Like, he's, like, negotiating with the ma. Like, it just feels, like, very not... Yeah. It feels like it feels like James Bond. Very it, weird. It yeah. feels like secret agent Like, the way he's... With the white, like, the white suit. Come on. Yeah. That's very James yeah. Bond. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And that's not rhetorical. Like, I, I haven't really seen many James Bond. That's kind of, no, like, yes, a thing, yes, right? Yes. Um, or, or at least any, in the older one. Sean Connery. Any sharp suit, yeah. Um, but, once again, sexy Harrison Ford is sexy. He is so sexy, and this is this is pre him breaking his nose, so it's all you know. Straight. When did he break his nose? I don't know, sometime. But you know, you know, in the newest Star Wars. Well, Mark Hamill got into a car accident and got a bunch of face. He fucked up his face. Are you thinking of Mark Hamill? After no. the first Star Wars movie, he got his face all fucked up. That's why he looked all cute in the first one. In the second one, he has like <laughs> his Mark Hamill kind of mug. No offense to Mark Hamill. But... No, I mean, I mean, in the scene with with Ben. With, with ben Han and Ben yeah. on the on the bridge yeah. thing. Yeah, you can see his his like the tip of his nose. Oh, really? He's like crook. Yeah, I thought he was just old. If that happens when you get old, then sure. But oh, I'm pretty know. sure I read that he broke his nose oh. once or twice. Oh, well, if you, I just wanted to know more about it. Yeah. But like, yeah, from like the middle of his nose to like the very tip, it kind of curves to the mm-hmm. right, I think, or left. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, very very fresh, very clean, very sharp. A little bit of stubble, but like a, a sexy, like a, a clean amount. Like it's just, it's like yeah, more like a five yeah. o'clock shadow than anything. Yeah. Oh, and his hair and his eyes and. All right, all right. <laughs> Stop fawning. You, you guys, because you can't see her face. She's like, it's like she's thinking like going into a trance right now. Like, <laughs> like she, it's like she drank the blood, like in this movie. <laughs> Um, he's just so cute. So he's negotiating with the Chinese mob, I guess, to get a diamond. Since when does he work with the mob? I don't think he's working with the mob. I think he's trying to make a deal with the mob. Right? No, I know. But, like, he... Theoretically, he made a deal with the mob in order to go on the adventure to get the diamond. I don't know. You know? But I guess it's whatever. The ends justify the means, I guess. It seems very uncharacteristic. Also, it it doesn't really come up again. No, it doesn't. Well, the idea is that he just always is on different adventures. (laughs) Um, And he's gonna kill Willie. Or at least poke her a little bit. Well, yeah. He with always, the skewer. He always has to have something as collateral with these people. Or these people. Just like the bad, the bad guys. Like the bad yeah. guys. All right. Nice save. No, I just mean like with the Nazis, with the Chinese, with, with yeah. the Indian. Or not the Indians. The, well, I guess he is Indian, but Mola Ram. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, why is this, at least just this section, mm-hmm. why is it written like a 30s gangster film? It basically is. I mean, because basically the way I guess that's the way it's like meant to be set up. With a Tommy like. gun and everything, it's a complete set. And they, you know, they were shooting under the way. But the way that like they're talking, yeah, like the way that they're talking, yeah. and it's like he's wearing the suit and like. It was. I thought it was was very artsy, um, which is like kind of weird. Wait, what do you mean by that? Like the whole dance number, the song and dance in like the void, and then um, the. The shots of like the mm. lazy Susan mm-hmm. um, on the table, you know, it's you, mm-hmm. instead of just doing a, you know, wide shot uh-huh. of of the two parties on both sides, mm-hmm. they like did a close up of the diamond and the ah, coins and stuff. You know? Okay, very artistic. Yeah. Pablo Picasso's shaking in his boots. <laughs> anyway, so, <laughs> um, so. Luckily, he. I guess he drinks some poison by accident, and but luckily, oh yeah, they spiked his friend drink. is the waiter. But then the guy shoots the waiter. How does no one notice that, the, that a guy just got shot, both by sound or by the fact that guy just got shot? Yeah, like there, 
The like it doesn't the seem like it's people not- were essentially unaffected. I think they were looking around, but they didn't. They weren't concerned for their lives. No, like after hearing gunshots. <laughs> I don't know. It was just very silly. Because I'm pretty sure I heard more than one. Yeah, <laughs> but this this movie right off the bat is is a lot more gruesome. Yeah. Um, because you know, like within the first ten minutes of the movie, oh my Indiana God. Jones the impales kebab. a guy with a flaming kebab. <laughs> um. <laughs> And this opening scene is just like chaos. It is. It's like everyone running around, machine guns the, the, flaring, <laughs> people getting punched, people getting thrown over. It's like a goofy James Bond. The, like it's the, not. Uh, it's it's not just that yeah. like oh I'm upset because it's different. Yeah. It's it's a problem because you're not doing that other different thing well. Like mm-hmm. it just feels really goofy. Yeah, like with the um, the classic, you know, looking for something, but it it gets you know, thrown out of your hands and then you have people running around being scared and so they're kicking it around and then and then they use ice and then she can't find it in the ice because, you know, they look kind of similar and then yeah. and then what else? Oh, and then the balloons. <laughs> Why were there balloons? Why was somebody still operating? Also, the ladies on stage were still performing. <laughs> yeah, I don't. It was just absolute, it was just absolute chaos. And then they, um, they had to jump out of like a cliff. Yes, but but but, but that that's way that's way ahead. Oh, you still got more. Yes, to say. I gotta say. Well, that's funny because when he's hiding behind the the cir- oh, it's actually kind of funny. The gong. But then the things kind of run. It kind of rolls, and it kind of reminded me of the boulder in the first movie. Yeah. But now he's using it to help. But anyway, yeah, but the Chinese guy's like he's shooting this Tommy gun. He's like laughing maniacally. He's like ha ha ha. ha. <laughs> yeah, that character was very weird. Um. But anyway, see, so yeah. So him and Willie. I don't know why Willie was even with him. Oh, because he needs the antidote, and she has the antidote. Um, yeah. But they go into the car, and Short Round is in there. Short Round's probably the best part of this movie. Yeah. He's such a cute little kid. He's, He's so cute. funny. The the uh, the the husband from Everything Everywhere All at Once. Crazy. Right. Also, so now he knows Data cr- from Goonies. Yes. Yes, that's right. Um, it makes me wonder what happened to him after this movie because it's a prequel. So it's like, what happened between this movie and Raiders of the Lost Ark? Yeah. Like, why isn't... And he's never mentioned again. Because he's an orphan, right? He said he found him on the streets. Yeah. His parents were killed. And and now he's, like, sticking to him like glue. Yeah. Maybe he died. It's kind of funny. It kind of reminds me of, like, a Batman Robin situation. Yeah. Like, this is his, like... <laughs> this is his ward. You know? Uh, their relationship is really cute. He, like, copies uh, everything he does. He wants to be him. Like, apparently, looks up to him. They're com- they're, when they're when they're playing car- when they're playing poker, they're, yeah. that was all improvised. Oh, really? Because Spielberg loved the kids... Uh, the ki- I, I forget his name. Um, uh, was, I honestly don't remember anyone's name except Harrison Ford in this movie. Um, yeah, it's like Ki Hu. Yeah. Huang? I guess Spielberg just really liked him and his personality. Yeah. So they they let well, them he, do this like, improv with scene. Him on the Goonies too. Yeah, exactly. Um, was the Goonies before or after this? I think probably after, right? When did the Goonies uh, come out? Eighty five. I think like eight, either eighty five or eighty six maybe. Yeah. So this one came or out. 80. Yeah, this came out in eighty five. Oh, no, the, the Goonies came out in 85. This came out in 84. So, yeah. So, this was first. Oh, okay. So, this was his, I guess, his big break. Well, that that's probably why he's in that movie. Uh, precisely, yeah. yeah. Um, but the relationship is really cute. It does make, me, does make me wonder what happened to him after this movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, Like, he, again, he's never brought up in anything else, I don't think. Uh, mm-hmm. Not even in, like, the... It'd be really cool if he had shown up in, like, the fourth one as, like, a, a grown man. Mm-hmm. It'd be really cool if he's in the new one that's coming out. <laughs> Maybe. You know, um, which I don't know what that movie's about at all. Because they already did the Cold it's, War. It's very under wraps, I feel like. It's, I think it takes place in the 60s. Does it? Yes, but... Or maybe the 70s. But they've already done the Cold War thing. So are they just going to do it again the way they did like the Nazis again with the Last Crusade? <laughs> like, are they just going to do the Cold War like again? I don't know. Maybe they'll do racial politics in the United States. Maybe that will be their... <laughs> maybe that will be their, their, yeah, their backdrop. Going- it will be the civil rights movement of, of the... <laughs> Yeah, he's going. He's going on an adventure to Alabama. <laughs> um, but anyway, so uh, Indy squeezes Willie's breast to get the antidote. Yeah. Whoa. Totally non-consensual at all. I guess like, he needs to do it in order to. Well, she she was putting up a uh, you know a fit, so I guess yeah. you know she was playing hard to get. It, it <laughs> also I don't know why she put it in there and then didn't act like it wasn't it, like it wasn't in there. She like. Hey, just give this man his... He's she's dying! Yeah, like... Well, maybe she was a little pissed that he was going to poke her with a skewer. Well, he did. He ruined her dress. From Paris? 
From Paris, no less. Well, I don't know. Because she was like, oh, I'm not that kind of girl. But, like, you know that's not what he's here for. He's here it's, for the it's antidote because like, he's about to die in, two, in, like, a minute. That's what I was saying. Like, it feels like a 30s, like... I know what the whole idea is it's meant to be a throwback to, like, the serials from, like, the 30s. But it it just feels like... um, Like, it just feels really goofy. Mm-hmm. You know? Pause. They get on this plane. But what? the pilots are with the Chinese mob. Yes. Shady. So. Also, this is why you don't. It's a whole network. You don't mess with the, the peoples in, mm-hmm. in the gangs or the mobs no. or nothing. But uh, why does he keep her all along? Because she's hot. Like, it, she's done being used as collateral. Well, is he bringing her along or is like, she going with. Is she choosing like, to go we with We never him? see. Is she trying to escape because she doesn't want to be with the mob? Because she seemed pretty happy with him. Yeah, like, they're never mentioned again. And, like, like um, it seemed like she was either working with them and or for them. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's just very unclear. Um, the writing definitely, I wrote down, the writing definitely feels different. Like, you could feel it feel different. Yeah. Uh, definitely more cartoonish. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Willie. I'm sorry. I don't know if this is sexist of me. She's so fucking annoying. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> she especially is. compared to Marion, right? And I'm yeah, not trying to like very different. I, I'm not trying to make comparisons where it's like, oh, well, this is a good female character. No, female character be like, like this, but she's just like a weenie. It's she, like she can be that way, but it's like everything that happens is like too much. She's like, just like screaming all the time. Like she, and she, just like like she falls off the elephant. And she's like, "Oh, I don't like being wet." Like, <laughs> it's just like it's like there's you never no ca- swimming. There's there's like no character. Yeah. Whereas with Marion, like well, again, that is I get character, I guess. No, but I mean like that. that those so, are like character traits. Yeah. yeah. Like, they're, but they're not like like real dimension. There's no like real dimension no, to yeah. her. And not to say again, like I talked about with the last episode, she like doesn't really have an arc the anything. first. Yeah, I mean, nor does India. That's the thing. Is like well, that's the thing with these movies. Is one. like, what's his arc in this movie? Well, he doesn't he doesn't steal it from the people like in the first one and put it in a museum. That's true. That's you know? true. So he, you know, I, I, guess, I suppose. I guess but, that's an improvement. But um, <laughs> he. That's true. That's true. Um, but yeah, like it's not like the first film had very comprehensive character work going on. But at least in that, Marion was she was complicated. Yeah. She was tough. She was under. There was like multitudes to her. Yeah, she was a she was a small business owner. Yeah, she was a small <laughs> business owner that gets completely destroyed. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Whereas Willie is just a weenie. She, I think I said this during when we were watching it. Like it just feels like someone brought like a muppet along. <laughs> and in fact, she actually kind of looks like Miss Piggy. Oh my god! And I'm not saying that because she's because she's not like large or anything. She's a very skinny woman. But I just mean like the her hair, hair looks like Miss Piggy's hair. hair, the curly blonde hair, and also she's like. Look, I'm white, so I can say this. She's the kind of white person where, like, they just look pink all the time. Yeah. Well, you some, know what well, I mean? some people are very pale, you know? But she's not pale. She's pink. I'm not saying she's <laughs> white. She's pink. Well, I mean, I, I think that comes along sometimes, you know? She just reminds me of Miss Piggy because she's just annoying. She's like, oh! At least Miss Piggy's meant to be funny. <laughs> oh, Kermie! Yeah. Oh, Wendy! She kind of has hair like um the the lady from The Assistant. Yes. I'm, yes, Julia Garner. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to just objectify her and just talk about her appearance, but we also gushed about Harrison. But we objectified him too. So we're equal. We're op- we're equal we're human. offenders. We're just human, and we appreciate other humans. Um, and kind of like a, a general note here, and and we talked about this a little bit while we were watching it, but obviously we weren't recording our podcast, so we got to talk about it now. Um, <laughs> it's interesting how this one is considered the darker one, and it definitely is once you yeah. get to like all like the dark magic but it's also the goofiest at the same time yes. um and it's i wrote down it's like it's as if like all of the goofy kind of like um i don't know what the adjective would be but it's like it, it's like the monkey remember like the monkey from the first movie yes, and it was like whimsical little yes, scenes yes, it would be like that but like an hour of just that and that's like what this yeah. the first half of this movie is yeah. and then the second half becomes the most horrifying thing i've ever seen <laughs> i know and like I I know she's a weenie, but they she's talk, not a weenie when her... things are actually horrifying. She's no, she's a weenie when not. No, she's no she's a weenie when things are not horrifying. She's no. a weenie when it's like oh 
no, ba, she, ba, ba, no. She's just a weenie when she doesn't take initiative for things. Like, you see the plane. There are no, you know, uh, no, pilots. No pilots. And, so, well, you got to wake him up. He doesn't know how to fly, fly a plane either. She's and, just um, a simple country girl. <laughs> from Missouri. Um, no, but what I was going to say is that, like, I know she's a, a weenie and everything, but, like, they also talk to her like she's a weenie. And, like, it's very condescending. It's like... Like, a lot of sweethearts and dolls. Yeah, and, everything he says ends with... He this, wasn't like that really in like, the first one. A doll, like doll or sweetheart. Even even from, uh, from... Short round. Short round, yeah. And he's like, oh, you call him Dr. Jones. You call him Dr. Jones. Like, <laughs> why is there this like, like weird power dynamic trying to... Yeah. He, I don't think he was... I don't think he ever called Marion like doll or sweetheart. Maybe because they had a history. Or maybe just because this was written by different writers and they were like, okay... 30s. They're in the 30s. It's like a, it's like the 30s. Okay, doll, sweetheart, darling, like all those kind of things. Like anything my grandfather would have said about a young woman is like what he says. I feel like he might have said it like once or twice, but it wasn't after every single sentence like it is in this movie. Like, mm-hmm. it's, yeah, it's exactly. Very repetitive. Um, and this movie is just structured very weird. It just feels very uneven. Like the minute the movie starts, things are just happening, but not in like a interesting in media race rest kind of way. Um, just, it just feels like uneven structurally. Like they have all the chaos in the bar or the club rather. And then the plane crashes and then they go off the bow onto the, and they're sliding down the mountain and then it goes off a cliff. It's just like, I could, we we were, but we both thought there was going to be a waterfall because of course there would be. There ended up not being a waterfall. I think we were just remembering the fourth one. The roaring rapids, there's a waterfall. The classic, oh, I think we're safe. And then you hear, (laughs) why is the river getting louder? (laughs) Um, Also, damn, they fell from a, were high, like they should elevation. have died on impact. They, they definitely would have died. Like a little floating raft would not save them from that impact. Like they fell from like at least two hundred. Because feet. a raft doesn't have any cushioning; it's just filled with air, so it no, helps the, you float in the yeah, water. The bottom is like just tarp, and yeah. then it's, it's like floaty <laughs> on the sides. Yeah. <laughs> um. So it's just it just feels very weird, then, like the way the movie is structured. One, a down another cliff. Um. Also, the movie is kind of racist like we were talking about this before like yeah. it, it's it, it's there's nothing actively racist it's not like it's it's like it's just, it's just like using like insensitive very stereotypical like to, sh- to illustrate a point yeah like at first i'm like why are they depicting the village this way like but then you find out later it's because the rock is stolen and the magic is gone or whatever and um you know, so it goes back to being like yeah. thriving and beautiful, but it's like, why was is it really that bad? Like, why do you have to show? This? I like, I would even go so far. It's not so much like so the stereotypical. De- I wouldn't even go so far as the depiction of like the villagers. I would say the two main issues is the the dark magic, yeah, which just like reinforces stereotypes about like brown which people being also, like evil, magical. Oh what the what what is it called the Mar- Maraj? The Marahaja. No. The Marahaja? Mar- yeah. Mar- yeah, sure. The Marahaja and... Um, the little boy, and, we'll call him. <laughs> and Shiva and, like, all that stuff. It's, like, like based out of actual Hinduism. Yeah, and, like... And so it's, like, they're kind of warping Hinduism. Well, like, the first like, one has to do with the Ark of the Covenant, and you don't get any, like, stereotypical Jewish people in it. You know what I mean? Like... No, yeah, it was more about like. So it's like, why do that with the brown the people? Power. Like, so why do that with the brown people? Yeah, you know like, what I mean? why? Like, why is it? Yeah, I don't know. So like, I guess there were there were like the natives in the beginning, part of the of the last movie. <laughs> yes. Well, and I was gonna say this: the <laughs> both movies, he's being chased by an angry group of people. <laughs> yeah, that's just kind of a normal. This is kind of a normal thing for him. Um, so I think the big issue is the white savior. Uh, excuse me, the, the the dark magic, and then the the white savior yeah. idea. Yeah. That whether it's him or I guess you could also say they're like the British. Which is also which is also like very weird and like so sudden because like as soon as they walk into the village, they're like like praising him and like on their hands. And, and they just assume like, like they were like we had prayed for someone and you're him. Well, he's just a random person. He's just a random dude. <laughs> Well, I mean, they, if someone else had walked in the village, would he have been just whoever yeah, like, whoever was the first stranger to walk in and post prayer? <laughs> that was gonna be the safe, the I savior. I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. Um, just someone. So they're like, you have to go to Panko, Pancot. Um, yeah. I think it's Panko. No, that's that's the breading. 
Oh, I don't know. It's like I could have sworn in the movie they said Panko. I remember being like, oh, they dropped the T. But maybe I misheard. I don't yeah. know. They have to go to the place. It really doesn't matter. There they have to go to the place. Weird pronunciation. Um, and it's they're talking about like this evil dark of magic, and they have to get the the Shiva Linga, which is I wrote that down. The yeah. sacred stone, and I guess the stone is one of five stones, yeah. and it helps protect their it's, village. It's a Thanos thing. It's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and I was thinking, if they have a big family. place, a big, like, altar for the stone. Yes. And I was like, maybe if you hit it, and it wasn't just, like, in this big, yeah. obvious place, it wouldn't have gotten stolen. Well, maybe, they, maybe they, like, pray to it, you know, or, like, prayers to the gods, but, like, next to it, you know, because mm, it Yes, 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 yes. It was like a conduit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I, the, all of this stuff, and basically Indy decides, to, uh, he agrees to go get this stone, Mostly just because he's like, ah, fortune. If this is the stone, because at first he doesn't know what it is. And yeah. then when he realizes what it is, he's also, like, oh, who pause. cares? Oh, what? He speaks Chinese and, and Indian. And, 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 no, and, and Hindu? Or Sanskrit or, or, or whatever it is, yeah. And, and Sanskrit. <laughs> um, he's very, he's a Renaissance man. It's like, it's like, uh, you know what? He's like Mystique. It's like whatever power. Whatever, whatever is necessary. Whatever is needed, <laughs> he can do. Um, but I was noticing this. Like he was like, oh, I don't care, or you know, I don't know. Because of course, this is before his transformative experience he has with the Ark. <laughs> but at this point, he doesn't believe in any of that mumbo jumbo. Yeah. Um, which is also inconsistent. Because then why is he all like? In the in the in the first movie, which takes place after this, he's like, yeah. "Oh, like I don't believe in any of that mumbo jumbo." It's like you saw the magic, of of that happened in India. Yeah. But anyway, but but <laughs> he doesn't care about any of that. He's just like, "Oh, fortune and glory, I can get this." Indy wasn't. He didn't really have a lot of complexity before. Yeah. But this movie, he really is just like an action figure. Yeah. Like this movie just feels like that. This is a very specific analogy, but it, it's almost like. This is a kid who's really into world history, mm -hmm. sitting down with his Indiana Jones action figure and acting <laughs> out his own little fanfic. Because when you do that, there's no character development when you're playing with your action figures. Yeah, no like, kid has ever yeah. played with action figures and had a character arc for their action figure. Well, That's what this feels like. Story. It just feels like it just feels like there's like, like, like I said, he didn't really have any complexity or nuance before. He really doesn't now, especially when you remove yeah. the Marion element. Because mm -hmm. at least, like, obviously she was like... He just seems... Because Marion was... And, and sexist. Because with this movie, and then the next one, the girls just feel like Bond girls. Where they're just, like, disposable. Yeah. Just like, they're gonna be in this movie and that's it. And they're just more like a love interest. Whereas Marion, there was backstory. What? There was there was conflict with the two of them. They had to, like, like real conflicts. Not just, like, yeah. in well, this movie they where they really, just, like, don't get along. Yeah. Um, so I'm saying that at least helped... Even though he didn't really have like a strong well, character you know arc what? in that movie, I, whereas this they don't have anything. Is my point? They don't have anything well, like that. You know what? I I, I do find it weird that like she isn't brought back in the second or third one, especially since like spoiler alert in the fourth one they have like a child together. Um, you would. But think apparently she he didn't know about it. I know, but you would usually you know tell someone. I mean, unless you were in danger and they were like abusive or something, you. You know, normally say, hey, you know, you knocked me up. But, like, I think that may, may be the point, or at least, like, supportive of the point. Like, that's his true love. Or, like, that's who he's supposed to be with, ultimately. Because, yeah. like, if he just slept with the, the two other ladies, then, like, he'd have three unknown children. Yeah, exactly. I think the reason why they didn't do that is because, again, they wanted them all to just feel like pop like i think this is the point where it's like i don't think they didn't do any character development because like they tried and weren't good at it mm -hmm. i think they intentionally but why did wanted they to be need that why did they feel why did they felt why why did they feel that they needed like a disposable female character i, I think because they're drawing from he should just be it should just be him in short round i think i i don't disagree with you <laughs> i think it, this is a really interesting question. I think it's because they're pulling from these, like, serials from the 30s, mm. which were also very simplistic, and I think they wanted to try to make them as as much like that as possible. So introducing too much, like, art... I don't want to say artistry. Because that well, makes it kind of pretentious. But you I, see what I'm saying? It's like, like, more like... The, the idea that a hero has to have a girl, or, you know, like... 
Because it's just a trope. Yeah, it's just it's just like yeah. a trope for these action heroes. Like he needs to save the girl, you know, and that's just like, well, and it's you like wouldn't have to save. Her. I'd rather you just not even have long. the girl <laughs> than have her not be developed. If you, you know what I mean? If you'd have left her in Shanghai, well then maybe you would have to be saving her. Um, but in general, making this a prequel removes any chance for an emotionally satisfying arc. Mm. Again, they don't try to do one, but then if it's a prequel, you can't have him go through this big journey because he starts the other one also not yeah. having one so it's, that's the problem with prequels in general is like how do you tell a satisfying story that but yet have them still start in the same place well, or I mean, end in the same place that they I start the next like one the build up like when when did he meet his um his friend from shanghai dressed as a waiter where's that movie yeah like like i feel like there's a way to build up to where a character starts because usually they're in a bad place right or there's like a problem or you know mm-hmm. some, something is awry yeah um and then you know then the high point very emotional and then at the end they've changed very you know classic campbell um joey <laughs> joey campbell <laughs> but like in this movie it seems like very light like action and then basically the high like the climax of the movie is just terrifying like there's yeah it's not really emotional to like okay like you're getting to the hard part but there's a light at the end of the tunnel in terms of your you know character arc yeah. but it, it's just like horrifying and then it's like light again <laughs> it's just yeah it's just very uneven i think that's a great point yeah. i think it's just i think it's just uneven in its ambitions and doesn't yeah. quite know what it wants to do or um with him not or even, with him not it's even just, the movie like with the character too yeah, that's the thing is that he's just kind of like, this is the first, I think this is, I think I saw this in the trivia. This is the only one where he's like not on assignment. Mm. Like either he's been hired by someone or sent he out just, by the. What, assignment from. Well, I mean the first the one he gets hired or just gets hired by someone oh, yeah. to do Did it. Get, didn't he get hired by like the CIA or something? In the, in which one? Like the, the fourth one? The first one. Uh, yeah, something like that. Just like the government. Like the government and, yeah. And like, um, whereas whatever. this one, he kind of just stumbles into it. And that's the thing. The movie yeah. feels very passive. And honestly, if you really think about it, not much like story really happens. Mm-hmm. Things happen, mm-hmm. but not much story really happens. Also, you know, is is he just like a like a freelance part time professor, or or does is, he's maybe, does, maybe does he have tenure? Like, why is he? <laughs> does he only go on adventures like during the summer? Because like in Shanghai, I I know he was probably lying just so that you know they wouldn't follow his trail trail or whatever. But like he was like, oh, I gotta get to Delhi. I gotta get to my university. But then he's like, ah, oh, fuck that. I'm gonna go get the stone, these sacred stones. <laughs> I'm gonna go get some stones. He's like, what if you have class tomorrow morning? <laughs> Maybe not tomorrow morning, but soon. Have you developed your lesson plans? Like. Maybe he only goes out on adventures in the summer when they're off. Yeah, that's what I see. Or saying. Christmas break. <laughs> Christmas he's like, break. Got, yeah, Shanghai is weeks. beautiful in January. <laughs> you got two weeks. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they, they go to this palace, which I guess, so I guess, I, so I was confused about like the governmental structure here. So, because this is a clearly, this is in the thirties. So this I is still know. under the British. This is when this is still like British, the British Raj, Ra, right? Or like, is that what they called it? Basically India under British c- control. Rule. Yeah. British rule. Um, I guess they go and this is like the leader of the, like, who's like the older Indian? The guy who they're uh, having dinner with. No, like, I know. I, I know. think he's supposed to be like a provincial leader. Like it's a province. I think I think he's like, it's like, a, like, like the advisor to the. Um, oh, the I British always, guy. No, the uh, no, the Maharaja. No, no, no. The Maharaja. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I, we're definitely Ma Maharaja. Yeah. Uh, I always get like the. <laughs> I mix up the consonants. I don't yeah. know where they go. Yeah. <laughs> um, because I'm not looking at the word. Um, but. I think he's like the advisor to him, maybe because like he's so young. But does he have authority? Like, so is he like well, the ruler of this province? I think is like the idea. Yeah, I think so because the reason that the British are there is because they're doing like a a check, mm-hmm. or like like an to ins- make sure they're not doing like for what I don't know. And it's like honestly, <laughs> look, I I dislike colonialism as much as the next guy. <laughs> yes, of course. You know, and there's no but to that. I'm, that's my preface. No, no. Um, it's it's be. interesting where it's like, I I'm obviously I I hate human sacrifices as much as the next guy. Mm-hmm. 
But I hate colonialism and ethnic condescension so much that honestly, when the British guys like, oh, we have to come and like check these areas because people do like human sacrifices. I'm honestly like, fuck you, British guy. Let them do, if they want to do their human sacrifices, light up. Does he say that? He says something about like they come in and he's like he's oh, so like pompous about it. When they're like, ta- oh, at when dinner, they're, yeah. At dinner, yeah. When they're talking about the the thuggies. And I was like, you let them do their thing. Yeah, I mean, let like, them let them do their thing. And then I stop and go, well, no, they shouldn't do their thing. They should. Uh, <laughs> um, Couldn't they just sacrifice goats? It's or something? it's funny that Willie wants to marry the Maharaja. But it's just a little boy. No, yeah. She doesn't like, know, yeah. <laughs> it's like in The Princess and the, Princess and the Frog when, um, like, Naveed is like, oh, I have a little brother. And, and uh, the, I don't know what her, I forgot her name. The white friend. Yeah. Um, is like, oh, I'll dance with him. But then it's like, a little boy. <laughs> just a little boy. I bet they were pulling from this. <laughs> like, maybe if you weren't trying to be a gold digger and just marry him for the riches... In the in the lavishness, mm-hmm. then maybe, you know, yeah, that wouldn't happen. Um, this dinner that they're eating is fucking disgusting. <laughs> to us, I mean, I'm sure people, I'm sure people eat that. that. Can't possibly be but what like, they eat. Monkey brains, chilled monkey brains. Well, served, know, that, that has I don't to be. Know about that, see, that, but, that's what feels racist. Where it's like the food is like. I was like, some of this cannot be. Some of this must not, be an invention of the writers. <laughs> like, well, I'm not saying like in India specifically, but I, I have seen like scorpion skewers and like you know beetle skewers. And I buy that, but like the monkey brains, the eyeball snake, soup. I don't know about the, well, I don't know about the eyeballs. With the eyeballs, I feel like they're just they're just selling themselves out. Where do you think they got the eyeballs from? Yeah, they're all like, oh, we're not doing any of human sacrifices. But we have these eyeballs. Those were definitely yeah, human eyeballs. That was not. Um, <laughs> and Willie doesn't want to eat any of this. For, honestly, for understandable reasons. Um, and snake too. People eat snake. Snake. I could see but that. But not the... Like, but not live snakes not coming snake. out of it. It was a snake filled with snakes. <laughs> it was a pregnant snake. And there was... It was pregnant? Or were those just little snakes? I thought that was just a... Because you know some of the garden snakes are... Open. Yeah, I thought that maybe they just stuffed it in. No, you're you're probably Maybe. right. You're probably right, but I don't know. but I'm, if she was pregnant, wouldn't they not be like ready to move around oh, and stuff they yet? Would be in eggs. Yeah, wouldn't they be uh, in eggs? Yeah. I thought they stuffed it. It's like stuffed like. Maybe they stuffed it because it, it was like stiff, so maybe they like. Yeah. Like uh, and then sewed it back up. it or something. <laughs> there, we should. Look, I'm honestly. And then just shoved it down. It's. <laughs> It was disgusting, but also I haven't eaten since lunchtime. It's about five o'clock right now, ladies and gentlemen, five thirty. So this is making me hungry talking about this. Um, but you know what actually was so good is real. she. I don't know about the monkeys. Later, later on, India brings her a green apple. Yes. And this bitch, she like makes out with this apple. Like I've never seen someone eat like it's it's so much lip that she also, she puts into this eating. She's yeah. like. Mm, mm, also, mm. yeah, she's like moaning and stuff. And also, he just took a bite of the apple, still holding it. And, and, she's this, and this bitch it. comes over and she's like... Oh, she eats like oh, five boy. bites in like a she's second. She's like literally eating out of his hand. It's very strange. Um, also, up to this point in the movie, not only... Like, it's not just that they have not gotten along. There was just no chemistry between he, these two he people. He just... Yeah. He's and like, then well, all of a sudden... to do with her. And then all of a sudden, both of them it, are just hot for each other. Which I understand because they're both attractive people. Sure. But, but, but like all of a sudden, like... She's not being whiny and sh- like she's gone from shrill to suave. Like suddenly she's like, "Oh, you know a lot about the co-. like." She's speaking just like literally in a different voice almost. <laughs> well, yeah, because I mean, he explicitly says on the plane to uh, short round that like he finds her very annoying and like you know he he literally wants nothing to do with her and thinks she's just like an inconvenience. And then all of a sudden he's like, "Okay, let me get in your pants." It's like, it's just like, here's obligatory, like, romancing scene. And I use that word, I don't say romance, I've said romancing. Like, he is, it's a verb. Like, he is rom- romancing her. Well, Do you know what I mean? Like, looking in her eyes that way, kissing her, and blah, blah, blah. Well, couldn't that build, and then at the end, they be, they're, you know. But see, too nuanced for what they're trying to do. <laughs> I'm not, that's not even a dig. Like, again, they're trying to pull from, like, those serials where you would just, you're hot, I'm hot, let's kiss. No, I know, but like, okay. I agree with he you. He brings just... the fruit, right? And they, they say whatever, and then they it's eat. It's like a reverse you know, Adam and Eve. They go, <laughs> sure. He goes to his room, she shuts the door, and then, you know, she puts her back on the doors, and she's just like, 
you know, kind of kind of the seed of the idea, right? Yeah. And then during one of the adventures, like you know, they do the classic, you know, saving of her, and then like holds her close, but it's like an accident. But like they like oh. being in each other's faces. Ah, uh, yes, 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 you yes, know yes. Oh, Viviana, or or Oscar sc- winning screenwriter Dalton Trumbo. <laughs> um, but this, but the first film had so much momentum. Yeah. Whereas this one has none, because like the pa- like I said, the oh, pacing. Because also. like they 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 were about to have sex, and then he like I guess like kind of dig like digs at her. So yeah. then they go and it's like. It's basically, it's like a romantic comedy, she, which, she like, cuts back and forth between them. back like, to, to being, like, easily offended. And then, like... And they're both just like, he's not coming over, she's not coming over. Well, the nerve... It's, like, cutting back and forth, and I'm like, aren't you guys, like, trying to get the stone? Like, there's, like, no, like... <laughs> well, not not during the night, preferably. I don't Maybe know. You should find a stone. On well, the- at night they go into the tomb that night. I know, but theoretically you would want to go find a stone um, after a, a nice, you know... Rest a nice night's rest. Yeah. Also, it is never addressed why uh, why that guy is in his room and tries to kill him. Well, I he get... must be part of the dark magic cult. No, I know, but like, wouldn't they just like be on guard and like just watch him so he didn't discover their little trap door or like you know? Yeah, I don't know. Um, because then that makes it super obvious. It's yeah. Like, oh, obviously. Yeah. Jason. Well, luckily they're able to kill that guy, yeah. and they find an entrance to a secret kind of not tomb like a secret it's a, chamber it's a cave yeah, yeah a chamber. oh no 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 the, yeah the well the cave and then the chamber because they go in and at first there are a bunch of roaches everywhere Ooh. and also the and the two people but they're not fully skeletons there's like still remains kind of yeah remains like on their heads See, another disturbing thing could like you, not you, necessary could you just do skeletons you know like like the ones you get halloween spirit <laughs> um, spirit. What's it called? Spirit Halloween. Yeah. Um. Also, this is a nitpick, but it, but it, it. I think it's valid. Why does Willie call <laughs> him Indy? Indy, because that's like a nickname. Sure. Indy is in, Indy is not the logical nickname for someone named Indiana necessarily. If I met someone named Indiana, I would just call them Indy. I would. I would because I've seen the movie Indiana Jones. Yeah. But Marion called him Indy. And I always assumed it was like a pet name because like they, they, you know, had a relationship and they knew each other for years and years and years. Why is she, when did she call him Indiana? Like she called him Indiana for part of it. And then she's like, Indy. But like, that's not necessarily a well, natural thing. You know what I mean? I guess she got tired of saying the whole thing. I don't know. Did you see what I'm saying? <laughs> also, why is her name Willie? Like, what is that short for? Apparently in the novelization that's revealed her name is Wilhelma. Oh. I thought, really I thought it might be like Willa or, or... William. <laughs> yeah, William. Bill. <laughs> like, I don't know, something <sighs> like that, you know? Um, so they go into this chamber and it's like this horrible spike room. This is the only scene I really, really remembered from this movie. Oh, really? Not the freaking ritual? That's what I'm saying is I didn't really like bother me that much. There's lava! Well, I thought when violence. I was a kid, again, there's evil on the magic. list of on the list of things I thought were going to be a bigger problem. Yes, yes. A yes. room with spikes was with a moving ceiling or walls with spikes was I one would, of them. I I don't I don't know. I don't think I would be able to get out after a while. I'd get too anxious, mm-hmm. very claustrophobic. So if um, the walls were literally closing in on me, I'd be freaking out. Mm-hmm. Also, how can they? Well, I don't think it was designed to make the person in it comfortable. So I think if you were uncomfortable, that would be the... Obviously. Consider that a success. No, but, like, forget the spikes. Just, like, I've seen other ones where it's, like, the walls, you know? Yeah. Not not ceiling to floor, but, like... The side know, walls, side, yeah. side walls. Also, how the hell can she hear them from the opening of the tunnel? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe well, he, he's screaming. He's talking pretty loud. But through a stone wall. In there a little hole? Yeah, a little hole, but they they went pretty far into the into the cave. I felt like. I don't know. One thing I do know <laughs> is that there are so many bugs, so many uh, bugs. I was so uncomfortable. Absolutely disgusting. So and bugs all at first it was just roaches, then it was like all different kind, like bugs I've never even seen before. Yeah, there were centipedes. There were like praying man- praying mantis. Or praying, the mantis. <laughs> praying mantis. 
Um, there are like crickets and like. And it just so once they get past this, luckily they they end up escaping the spike room, and they go into what essentially looks like hell. Yeah. Like it actually just looks like what hell would look like. That that didn't stick with you, like the hellish nature of. I kind of remembered the ceremony, but mostly like the cult, like the orange and the. I didn't remember like the. I just remember the ceremony. I just remember being very like confused by how dark it was. Like I remember watching being like. Uh. Even as a kid, I, I wouldn't have articulated it this way as an eleven year old. Mm. But I think I was confused by the tonal shift. Yes, it, it is very drastic. Like I remember that's I do remember I do remember that like being like conf- like thinking it was a very strange movie. Yeah, I remember I remember it being strange. That that was my impression. It was just like yeah, it is very strange, and I didn't really remember the entire ceremony. But I just like I think the place itself kind of gave me the heebie-jeebies. Like, mm-hmm. Not a place you would want to be. Yeah. Um, so, what I don't understand, and the little, the little Maharaja, who said he didn't know anything about voodoo, he's there! Well, but I, I we first, learn but later. We learn later he was under the spell. When yes. I wrote my notes, I wrote, little Maharaja was lying? Yeah, I thought, I thought he was in on I thought he was just trifling, he, but. Yeah, he was trifling, and that he was working with the older guy, the advisor guy. I was like... You blatantly said at dinner that you didn't want that that you these people will never be in your kingdom or like these rituals will never happen again, human sacrifice. And here you are, front center, front row seat, sitting down, crisscross applesauce. Maybe we'll get some popcorn. Yeah, crisscross applesauce, looking looking at a man's heart being ripped out of his chest. Yeah, it's just, it's no bueno. They were, well, at um, least the advisor guy was. So what I don't understand is how, and apparently there's there, this is a mystery to other people too, like what I was reading online, is how he takes his heart out, but then the guy's still alive. The magic. But that's what people think is the magic. But Because, I, but, because it, it healed itself. Yeah. On the outside, so th- I don't know if it would heal the But if like, you didn't have a heart maybe, circulating your blood, maybe, you'd be dead. Maybe it created, actually, you know what? No, because they're still connected. Because when he caught on fire, his heart caught on fire. Which so, also you even maybe, magic. Maybe you know more about no explanation. Maybe you know more about dark magic than I do. Uh, what? But why? What was the point of the sacrifice? Like I thought maybe he was gonna like, eat the heart or like it was gonna give to the gods or to the evil. Oh, I magic guess so. Of the stone. But I was hoping. Yeah, I was hoping like maybe there would be some kind of like demonstrable like reciprocal effect. Uh, do you know what I mean? I don't know. But apparently he has those powers all the time, as we find out, because he tried to rip Indy's heart out later. He tried, yeah. And also, are there is there air conditioning in there? Because they are very close There's to no lava. There's no air circulation. There, there is no air Theoretically, circulation. they should all have burst in the flames, being yeah. that close to lava. <laughs> close to lava. And it's like, I mean, it's a big room, but like there were a lot of people and the lava. So I just, I just feel like everyone should be sweating and like... You know, like everyone would be sweaty and and probably pass out because of the heat. Like, well, maybe they're used to it because it's not area of the world. Obviously, not lava, but like, are they? in India, isn't it really hot in India? Well, sure, but I mean, you would theoretically try to stay inside. I guess so. I don't know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but you know who? If if there was air, any air conditioning, you yeah. know who wouldn't have that air conditioning? The oh, child slaves. The child sla- yeah, so I thought it was just like a religious thing. They're, they, you know, they did the. No, sacrifice. they're searching for the other stones, I guess. No, I know, but they got out of the cave so quickly. How all those people got out of the cave so quickly? Oh, when they get freed, you mean? No, no. After the sacrifice. Oh, 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 and then oh, oh, oh. Goes yes. To sorry, get the I skipped stones. ahead. Yes, 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 yes. In the in the they sacrificial like, room. They were like, "It's time for lunch. Clear out." Like it's. <laughs> like I think they just went to get coffee and donuts for about fifteen minutes, and they're like, <laughs> and then they came back. <laughs> they, well, yeah, and then they came back, but it turns out they have like a whole little ecosystem. They have a, like a whole little like world economy in there. Yeah. They, they got the, they got the slaves. They got they got this mining business. They got like <laughs> I don't know business. <laughs> <laughs> operations yeah like you know the there's a whole thing it's a whole thing <laughs> yeah it's pretty fucked up um and the movie it just at this point once they after the spike room because the spike room is still gross with the bugs and, but it's still like classic adventure indiana jonesy no, after no, the spike room gross. it goes from immensely goofy it, it, that's the shift to immensely intense 
and yeah, disturbing it, and unsettling. It, it, <laughs> like after that is when they go to the sacrificial room. Like and after that, the movie is just that's just what it is. Now. Also, it's so funny when like he goes into her room to try to like check for for like a murderer. And oh, we're going like, what earlier? Yeah. Oh yeah. But yeah. I, I forgot to say, and she's like, you know, I, I'm right here. You know, come and get me. Big whatever. boy. Like I'm ready, but like. He's just, like, straight up ignoring her. And not even, like, saying what just happened, like, literally two seconds ago that he was being strangled by someone. Like, (laughs) so it went from, like, action, kind of romantic, to completely forgetting about that. Just, like, I don't know. They just straight up killed the mood. Like, they could have hopped onto bed, like... (laughs) If he had just stayed in there, maybe the whole movie wouldn't have happened because he never would have gone back to his room. And got strangled, no. and would have realized there was something fishy going on. No, because they might so maybe have, the they whole might movie. have strangled uh, Short Round. Oh, I don't know. no, not Short Round. But yeah, so and then it goes. That to, wouldn't be hard because he's just a little kid. Yeah, but and then it goes to adventure again, and then it goes to like intense. Yeah, um, aren't voodoo dolls like a like Louisiana like, Caribbean kind of thing? What what is going on yeah, in India? Like voodoo. Like, why is this happening in real? India? How do they? Why do they have voodoo dolls? I don't know. Maybe it did they learn about it? like shit? We should get in on that shit. Uh, <laughs> you all you have to do is we've been casting curses on people. All I gotta do is build a doll of someone and I stab it and they'll get hurt. Okay. Also, they've been there for like what maybe three hours. How did he build one with how? a little hat and whip and everything? Yeah. How? <laughs> who in the hell can sew that fast by hand to make a little voodoo doll that looks exactly like Indy? Yeah. And when did he cast the spell on him? Because, you know, if you, you can just make one, but then, you know, you have to connect them. And then, yeah, why is he using it? In, maybe maybe different religions have voodoo dolls. Or, I, well, I guess know. not voodoo dolls, because that would be from voodoo. but Which is an actual religion, by the way. Oh. Yeah, it's a, it's a mixture. Like I think I told you, the, it's a mixture of uh, French Catholicism, because, you know, they, that's a big... The French, of course. Yeah, they came to Louisiana. It's then, named after King Louis. <laughs> yes. And then also, uh, like, traditional African, like, um, rituals and, like, religion. Mm-hmm. And and then also kind of the nuanced one of the, you know, black people from, from Louisiana. Oh, cool. Okay. Or, yeah, that's what I read. Anyway, um, so they want to get rid of the British, the Muslims, the Jews, the Christians. They want to get rid of everyone, I guess, and uh, take over India or the world. Or so, okay. so very anti-colonial. Okay, I can get behind you, I guess, sure, sure. with the British. But you know what I don't get with the whole human sacrifice thing is um, it's very quick to, you know, kill someone in lava. But to make a person it takes about nine months. So if you if you have taken over the world, and you sacrificed all over the world, don't you think that would be a declining population? It's not. It's not a well, sustainable. It's not sustainable <laughs> situation. It's you know, it's very true. I don't think they thought of that. No, I I don't think they thought of that. <laughs> Neither the evil people nor the screenwriters. <laughs> um, so they force Indy to drink the blood, and he gets brainwashed. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, it's like in Scooby Doo when he gets brainwashed. <laughs> it is. The Scooby, the live action Scooby Doo. I thought movie. the guy was the same guy because they kind of look similar, but he's not. So they, they try to sacrifice Willie, and, and Indy's just like, Habu la <laughs> I'm not going to be racist. That's what they do in Scooby Doo, no, right? That's what they do in Scooby Doo. Um, oh, which, the Scooby Doo. <laughs> which also, which also, um, has elements of voodoo because there's the the voodoo doctor or the voodoo maestro as he's Vo- oh voodoo maestro um, <laughs> on the beach and he's like don't you see I'm trying to sacrifice this chicken <laughs> he's like now I gotta start the whole ritual over again <laughs> <laughs> we should we should do Scooby Doo yeah all of them what with the anime ones um, but luckily short round basically I guess burns the evil out of Indy. yeah what? he just basically pokes him with an evil like with a torch well because he like literally backhand bitch slapped him like oh it was so sad it too. was so sad short, 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 he looks up to him so much short round like was crying he's like <laughs> yeah cause, well, he says I love you you know you're my best friend he's like you're my pal um 
so he gets the evil burn out of him and they fight the guys or whatever uh the ev- the head evil guy rolls under the, the statue <laughs> He, it's like a secret he, compartment. He goes he, like, goes, Loop, and he just yeah, like rolls he, under he like a marble. How he got into the laying position, I don't know. But he was literally standing up, and and there was a trap door. But he didn't fall through the trap door into like a slide, you know, like typical whatever. But instead, it, it was a rectangular trap door, and he rolled into it. Like, like it fit his. It, it was the length like, of his body. Like exactly. he was rolling down a fucking hill. What? The, the foresight you would have to have to build something like that. <laughs> How would he knew that he would need something like that? Well, maybe it's for, like, skeletons normally. Maybe that's where they drop the heart. No, the heart burned to dust. Or I don't even know oh, if yeah. there was dust. It burned to nothing. How he had a burn. Why do they dust? have to burn the bodies without the heart? Why can't they just leave the heart? Because the heart's going to burn anyway. That's what I'm saying is, like, uh, do they need the heart for something? Why can't they just leave the heart in there? Is it just to be scary? Is it just is it just for the movie's sake? I think it, I think it was to... Activate the stones, right? No. Activate the juices. I don't know. Or, or like, uh, show what's happening. I mean, obviously, you can hear what's happening and kind yeah. of assume when someone is dropped into a hot, swirling pit of lava, which I don't know why it's swirling. It's like Satan's butthole. It is Satan's butthole, but why is it swirling? Is it is it falling? Well, it's, it's like a... Yeah, where does it go? Where is it swirling It's like to? a drain. It's like a drain, like... I don't know. But I don't know. I I guess to show the evilness. Yeah, a swirl, a, a, a bat of lava without a swirl isn't really evil. It has to swirl. Well, in the Lord of the Rings. Because it makes you ask. It makes you ask, what's at the bottom of the swirl? <laughs> it looked more cosmic than it did lava. Yeah, like, it did kind of like a like, galaxy or something. Yeah, because in Star Wars, in in the other one. Other things. Oh, Lord of the Rings. It doesn't swirl. No, 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 no. But, it just flows. It just flows. Um, so this is where Indy kind of becomes the white savior. He frees the slaves. Yeah. Also, you know, okay. Abraham Lincoln, eat your heart out. <laughs> okay. Or poor choice of phrase, eat your heart out. <laughs> I don't think they eat it. Well, maybe they do. Um, if they eat their eyeballs. But why didn't they do that beforehand? I mean, no, no, no criticism to the kids, but like. You know, because they're probably scared. Because they're, they're brown. They need a white man to help them do it. <laughs> but that, Obviously. But, but Rajit got out. Rajit got out. How did Rajit get out? Yeah, that is true. They don't explain how Rajit got out. Surely he did not do what Short Round did. Climbing the ladder and then, and then you know. I don't know. But they have the numbers and they have the rocks. They, they, they outnumber. They outnumber. They don't, they don't have the strength and the whips of the guards. The numbers and the rocks. Well, you could say that, but um, if you if you look at our own horrible s- stain of slavery in this country, um, this now we're getting political. Um, during the Civil War, most of the slaves, like the slaves, like outnumbered the white oh, people, yeah. but like most of them just like kept working. Yeah. Even though like they could have, well, I mean, people definitely did escape and leave, but a lot of them just like. Well, that just, was because they would send flesh-eating dogs after you. That is also true. And shoot you. Or that is whip another you. true. That's a good point. Also, but my point being is just that it's like just because it no, because structures of power can sometimes be very psychologically. Effective. No, yes, of course. So that's, that's what I'm saying. No criticism to them, but what? No shade. Wouldn't Rajit getting out, you know, like inspire, kind of inspire them, or at least start a start know. a little. That's the movie rebel. I want. Is like a prison escape movie yeah, with the little, with the Indian have kids. A little rebel you know maybe they were told he was killed maybe maybe they don't know he escaped Um, also how did he how did he get free if he drank the blood or did the kids not drink the blood i don't think they drink the blood Mm. um but also how did he have that little claw where did he get that from i don't know they never explain it it goes unexplained (laughs) it does go and also he just he just did he just bring it to the first person he saw or did he bring it to indy on purpose like he didn't know. know he was there there's so many questions. There's so many unanswered things. Also, I'm pretty sure we talked about the halo effect in the first movie because of... What do you mean the halo effect? What is that? I don't know what you mean uh, by that. Ha- what do you mean? We talked about it in the first one. I don't think we did. Did we? Yes. It's like it's like an angelic... like. Um... The tendency for pressure created in one area to... The, ten- the halo effect, according to Google, the tendency for an impression created in one area to influence opinion in another area. Yeah, so, so the, the con- halo effect is like is like a um, like a purity, a a savior type thing. 
You know, because we could, we didn't see Indy for the long, longest time in the beginning. And then there was a light behind him. That's a halo effect. I think you're confusing what halo effect means. Um, it's a halo effect. An example of a halo effect is when one assumes that a good looking person in a photograph is also an overall good person. The idea that one positive attribute must imply that other attributes are also positive. That's what the halo effect means. You're just referring to religious imagery. That's not the halo effect. No, okay, but that also... I'm saying there is the religious so, imagery... That's not the halo effect. The halo effect has nothing to do with religion. Okay, well... That's... The halo effect is like how we think that, oh, this person's really talented, so they're probably also... Like, we instinctively just think they're a good person, but usually they're not. That's okay, what the halo well, effect the is. the halo effect of, of cinema... No, that's not... Of, no, of, no, of, no. You know, photography, videography... That is when someone is backlit, and then it has that, like, we're supposed to assume, like, oh, this is a good person. Okay, which, that's, that's not called the halo, but yes, I understand what you're saying. It, it, is a, it is a derivative of the halo effect. No, that's not what the halo effect means! Yes, it does! I just told you what Google said. I know, but because he's an adventurer, he's a savior, he's the American hero. That's why he's depicted like that in the first film, with the light. Yes, but that's not the hill. Okay, whatever, whatever effect. Why are you arguing with me? I, because you're just wrong. The, what I'm trying to say. <laughs> okay, fine. Religious imagery. Because in the first one, <laughs> there's that light effect. What light effect? The one I just explained. Oh, <laughs> sorry. And then in this film, they turn him around and whip him while he's chained to a post or like a rock. It reminds me of Christ. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But that's not what the halo effect. The halo effect is a I psychological don't... situation. Okay! I'm saying that effect psychologically tells audiences that that is a good person. Yes. Like in Greece, when the fucking angels come out of heaven, there's lots of white light in clouds coming out because they're coming from heaven. When you Hence, say Greece, do you mean it... the country or the movie, the musical? Come on, man. I genuinely don't know. There's an angel in that movie. What? There's an angel in the movie Grease. Yeah, the musical. Oh, I didn't know if you're talking about the country or not. Like ancient Greek mythology. Aren't there angels or kind of like ghosts There's or spirits? Gods. Oh, I don't know. Gods and goddesses. And yes, I guess that could also be depicted that way too. Because guess what? They're coming from Mount Olympus. And guess what? They're gods. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, so I'm the, just saying that the religious imagery yes. is, is threaded through, mm. and we'll, I, I will see if they're in the third and fourth. Okay, keep keep make sure you keep an eye on that for us. Well, it was just very obvious. <laughs> the, the the boy stabs the voodoo doll while he's fighting with the guy with the big guy, yes. who is a white a German actor. Oh, in brownface, it's the same guy who was like the big tough guy that Indy fought near the airplane, and then the guy gets sliced by the plane's rotors. Oh. Or rudders or rotors? Did you... Propellers? Propellers, thank you. Um, But did you look up to see... You thought he was the butler from... No, that's a different guy. The British guy is the guy from The Shine. Oh, the British guy, the British guy. And yes, that is the British... The British officer in this movie is the... Was the... Was not the butler. He's like the guy in the bathroom in The Shining. Well, he's posing as a butler, but but he was the previous watcher. He was like, yeah. Who murdered the twins. Yes, 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 yes. Um, um, but it turns out the boy wasn't evil after all. Um, yeah. And they go to try to escape, and we have the whole minecart chase. I know I'm kind of like yada, yada, yada well, in this, okay. the end of this movie, but like... About the German actor, though. Um, the, oh, okay. But. <laughs> well, you just, just... What does there say about him? Well, at first I thought it was just coal dust, but... <laughs> <laughs> you know, that happens, but apparently it was it was a little bit of brown face. It was just, just a little... But you could definitely tell because uh, around his eyes and his mouth. Like, also, his facial structure just looks like a European man. Well, he could be a mixture of Indian and a British. <laughs> a Brit. Because they're there. That's true, you they never, are. You never know who you're going to fall in love with. You, you never know. You never know. Um, the minecart chase is really good. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's probably like, the best like uh, conceptualized sequence of the film. You know what it reminds me of? Uh, the Disneyland roller coaster on which this is it was based, no. or vice versa. I mean, what? No, it reminds me of the same thing. The what are they called? Cart. Mine cart. Oh, mine carts. 
the minecart uh, chase also in Home on the Range, a critically <sighs> acclaimed film. There's always a minecart chase somewhere. <laughs> Whenever there's minecarts, there's gonna have to be a chase because they're so naturally they look like roller coasters. And in fact, I saw a trivia point that to get the sound of the of the minecart going, they actually feel, uh, they 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 brought like a sound recorded. recorder onto a D- Disneyland roller coaster. Like they got them to yeah. turn off all the music of the ride or whatever, yeah, and just yeah. okay. and all the sound effects and just just. Yeah. Because a lot of Disneyland rides are like, it's not just a roller coaster. There's like music or like no, characters yeah. singing. Yeah, like or... the Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, yeah. They look so scary and weird. Yes. Oh, no. We'll, we'll get to Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> we'll get there. Um, so, but they get out. I'm kind of yada yada this. But anyway, so they dump a big can of water, a big jug. It has so much water. It's like yeah. a big, big, also... <laughs> I don't know, a big tub of water or something. In it. No, no. It's a, it's a, yeah, like a water tank. Yeah, it's like a tank. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah, it's a, a big water tank. tank. They dump it, and uh, they try to escape across this long, rickety old wooden bridge. Well, hold on. Before you get to that, uh, oh, oh, oh. the water should have evaporated. It's so close to uh, lava. lava and also just sinking into the ground. But, well, that wouldn't be fun, right? So. <laughs> yeah, no, that wouldn't. So they have to run. That wouldn't be a fun adventure movie for the whole family. So, so they have to run from gushing, roaring waters that, like, go for a minute, like, two or three minute long of it just, like, spewing out of the cliff. They're falling off the cliff and all this stuff. There was not that much water in that. In that no, tank. there was not that much water. Um, but anyway, so they got into this bridge. It's funny because uh, w- Willie is all nervous about it. Sure, it's like, it's fine. Look, he just jumps up and down and then he falls right through it. Uh, yes. It's like, bro, maybe don't jump up and down this riggedy-ass bridge. It might be um, old. Then we get this funny little moment. Termites? Indy is like encounters these two swordsmen. Yeah. And there's a little callback to the first movie because he reaches for his gun to shoot yeah. them. But <laughs> yeah. he doesn't have one, so he's like, ah oh, shit. So he has to kind of like outrun them. Um Does he normally curse? Curse? Yeah. No. I don't remember him. Not personally. a lot, but when he does, he he knows when to do it. Yeah. You know? It's like a very strategic. Mm-hmm. A very strategic c- c- cursor. Yeah. <laughs> um this whole bridge scene, I, I really, when we do these, I can't, I really do write, like, less and less notes as we go on. So, I'm like, the bridge scene at the end's cool. Uh, you know, the, the, bridge? the bridge scene. Like, when oh, they're all on yeah. the bridge. and. Well, you know what I found a little weird? What did you find a little weird? Is that the, the thuggies were all kinds of confused when he chopped the bridge. But he, been, had, well, he was holding it up like he was he about to He had do- been holding that shit for, like, five minutes. He had a conversation with the with Malaram, like, huh? Yeah. It, <laughs> they were like, whoa! It's like you you saw them preparing themselves to like yeah. tying themselves up to not fall. Yeah. So he he cuts the bridge and they all fall where and they're climbing trying to climb up the bridge now and he's fighting with the evil guy. What's his name? I don't even know. Do they even say his name in the movie? Mal what? Malaram. Yeah. Malaram. Uh, yeah, what? Okay, that's his name. Malaram. I just didn't know what his name was. Yeah, yeah. Malaram. Um, they're fighting over the bag because Indy took all the statues, or whatever, and they're all or the rocks, excuse me, and they start falling down into the into the river to all the alligators. Which is so weird because he was like, "I don't care that you have the stones, just drop them, we'll find them." And now all of a sudden he's like, "Give me the stones." Well, I think most of his army is now dead. <laughs> so now he's like, Shit, "I'll have to do it." <laughs> Um, but now Indy knows, like, black magic, and he, like, or, like, dark magic, and he starts reciting, like, ancient incantations, and... No, it was, I think it was in Hindi. But what was he saying in Hindi? He was, like, reciting, like, an evil spell or something. Why? What happened? He, like, did that, and then the, the stone started to glow, and it, like, burned uh, the guy's hand. Yes, it, it yes. caught on fire. Yes. Um, so Indy just now knows, like, dark magic, I guess, or... Maybe they taught it to him while he was under the spell... I don't, I don't know. So they try to climb their way up and whatever, and he fought that the evil guy falls into the river. Thank God the British are here to save the day. How save the us hell? save us from these evil brown people. How the hell did they know that they were there and that they needed to be saved? Because this is like a different a completely different um, uh, environment than where the castle or the temple is. Yeah. Where it was like very sandy and whatnot. I don't know. How far is it from the temple? I think I've said I don't know about fifty times during this podcast. I'm just saying, no, no, I'm not. I'm just I saying that's the question. nature of this movie. Is that I'm it's just like I don't there's know. There's a lot of unanswered 
answer questions. Um, so they bring the rock back, and the village has now been reborn, and it's beautiful now. <gasps> you know how the... Hold on. How what? You know how the British knew, probably? How did they know? Or, I'm guessing... Um, do, 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 do. Hold on. Uh, the Maharaj? Yeah, that's right, right? The, the Maharaja. Oh, the Maharaja... Remember, he he told uh, Short Round where to go, but he still, he was still on that cliff. So theoretically, he knew. Maybe he told the British. Yeah, that. yeah. Maybe he, there was a secret oh. staircase or something. A secret staircase. Well, because surely they don't all come in from that cave filled with bugs. I don't think they ever leave that cave. I think they come in once and then. Oh no! There's the remember the exit. The, yeah, to the left. There was another yeah. entrance. Yeah. Remember they run out. Remember they run through the thing and they run through the dining hall and. They never They <laughs> eat, eat in the cave. I don't know. Um, so they get back to the village and everything's fine now. And he's not going to take the rock. He's going to leave it with the village. Yes. He's such a good also, guy now. very strong powers. They they weren't even in the village. They were just like walking to the village. And it was already reborn. Already right? so luscious with crops and all this stuff and colors of different like cloths and whatnot. Ooh, sorry, this movie's just so boring. I'm, I'm falling asleep. I'm sorry. sorry. Let's do some trivia. The movie ends, they kiss, and it ends. You know what I noticed is that after their whole Mackin scene, is that they're never able to kiss again. Because something, they're about to, and then... Something and then, always happens. Yeah, like, at the end, it's the, it's the elephant. elephant. Like, with the... Spraying the water on spraying them. Spraying the water. And Sir like, ha, 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 ha. Yeah. That is funny. <laughs> I wonder if they made him talk that way, though. I don't know, because he kind of talks like that in... Not, like, with broken English, but he, he has an accent in everything ever all at once when he's, like, an adult. Uh, I don't remember. I remember the ladies, though. Yeah, Michelle they're the main, Yao, yeah. Because they're the main parts. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's do some trivia. Before I fall asleep, I'm starving. <sighs> it's hot. We have the AC off, and it's hot. Because we're filming this in the summer, or we're recording this in the summer, excuse me. I'm tired. I haven't taken my anxiety medication. Oh my let's goodness. let's get through this. Sure, sure. Okay, for the bug chamber sequence, Kate Capshaw, who who plays Willie, yes, was really covered. Was actually covered with over two thousand insects. Oh. She took sedatives prior to the scene to get over her initial fear and claims, "quote They definitely worked." Ugh. Oh my That's god! That's disgusting. I, I thought maybe it was like I thought real. maybe it was like a stunt double. Oh yeah. Doing it or even like just like oh, sticks that they put pants and shoes on. You know what I mean? But And then she had to stick her hand through the thing with all yeah. the goop. Um, an unproduced script that became Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, which is the fourth film, oh. uh, had Indiana reveal what happened to Willie, oh. saying, quote, Last I heard, she married a big shot director. This is an in-joke, as Kate Capshaw married Steven Spielberg, though the joke <laughs> did not make the final draft of that fourth film. Uh. Uh, while filming the whipping scene, I, don't, I do not know if this is true at all. Don't read the trivia before I say it. I I'm see not, you looking I'm down. Not. I'm just oh. staring at it. <laughs> I, <laughs> that's even weirder. <laughs> I, I, this seems like it has to be a joke. This cannot be real. But I'm going to read it to you. Because again, Let's this is IMDb it. trivia. Let's while filming it. the whipping scene, <laughs> the crew played a practical joke on Harrison Ford. Oh. While he was changed, chained to a large stone. Barbara Streisand appeared. What? Dressed in a leather dominatrix outfit. What? She proceeded to whip him, saying, quote, that's for Hanover Street, which I think was a movie Harrison Ford was in. The worst movie I ever saw. She continued whipping uh, him for Star Wars and making uh, and for making all that money. What? <laughs> Carrie Fisher then threw herself in front of Ford to protect him, and Irvin Kirshner, who is the director of Empire Strikes Back, <laughs> tried to direct her Steven Spielberg, saying, quote, is this how you run your movies? <laughs> this entire sequence was filmed. I have no idea if this is true. Further research Why is needed. Why were they on set? They're not in the I mean, they just came to visit. <laughs> I don't know. People, people do that sometimes. I, I that that so. can't possibly be true. Uh, Kate Capshaw's dress mm -hmm. in the Shanghai Club was completely made of real 1920s and 1930s original beads. Wow. This meant that there was only enough to make one dress. The opening dance number was actually the last scene to be shot. But the dress did feature in some earlier location shots in Sri Lanka. In particular, a nighttime one with Harrison Ford and Kate Capshaw sitting by a campfire, with the dress drying on a nearby tree. Yeah. Unfortunately, an elephant had started to eat the entire back of the dress, what? which was saved just in time. 
Consequently, some emergency repair work had to be done with what remained of the original bees, and it was costume designer Anthony Powell who had to fill out the insurance forms. As to the reason for damage, he had no option but to put, quote, dress eaten by elephant. <laughs> Classic. That's a real story. Also, um, uh, I feel bad for the elephants because, like, there were no step ladders. And she so had to dig her heels into she it. Dig, she dug her heels into the leg, and then Indy was fucking pulling on his on his ear. Surely yeah. that has to hurt. Yeah, I, I don't think... You know, I wonder if at the end of the credits said no animals were harmed in the making of this. <laughs> well, we didn't watch it all dirt. Yeah, we didn't watch it all the way through. <laughs> well, it wouldn't say anything. It wouldn't say animals were indeed harmed. <laughs> it just wouldn't say anything. <laughs> and also, it's interest... Wait, so when are they in Sri Lanka? Because they do... they do Probably all the outdoor stuff mention. in the jungle. Okay, because Data says it at one point. She, He's, like, referring to Shri. I don't know. He's like, oh, back in Shri or something. I don't know. They're not... They're, Very strange. No, no, no. They're in Sri Lanka, like, because that's where they filmed. No, I know. Even though it's supposed I'm to be India. I'm saying Short Round, the character, uh-huh. says a brief line. Oh, they're, and they're talking about real Sri Lanka, but it wasn't around there. They never go to Sri Lanka in this no, movie. No, I know. I'm sa- he said, remember, back yeah. in Shri... And? Or Shri. So maybe they... It was implied that they had been there. Point. Yeah, when he said when we were in Sri Lanka, you would it, it's more of an implication. He said no, we were you I, <laughs> I just say never mind. Anyway, the chilled monkey brains were made from custard and raspberry sauce. Mm. I'll take some monkey brains. Would you would you eat that but in that monkey's head? No, those heads were I know they were fake, but those were terrifying. Maybe they weren't fake, maybe they were real. Those were not cute monkeys. They were like they were like uh evil monkeys. They were kind of creepy looking. Yeah. Uh, Kate Capshaw had to be taught how to scream. What? Because she screams a grand total of 71 times throughout the movie. Yeah, you can see why. Yeah, it's, a, it's yeah. annoying. Uh, so here's the big fun fact. Yes! Can I read? I want to read it. You read it. Okay. <clears throat> in the U.S., this film and The Gremlins, which came out in 1984. The same year. Yeah. Oh, yes, the same year. Uh, led to the creation of the PG-13 rating. Many people felt both movies were way too violent for a PG rating, but not violent enough for an R rating. And some believe that both films would have been rated R if Steven Steven Spielberg's name hadn't been attached. Yeah. So, so that's the reason. Honestly, it makes, you need, I feel like you needed some kind of intermediary. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess there was, PG, there was there was G, PG, and and then R. R, but I guess there's a difference between like Shrek being PG because of like in your windows, and then like this being PG for being horrifying. Yeah, because like it, it's like okay, you can be young, you don't have to be eighteen, but like you know. Yeah. Fair fair warning. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, the film is banned in India, and never shown on TV channels in India. Oh my god. They didn't want them to film there, and they won't show it. Yeah. Uh, the only Indi- This is the only Indiana Jones movie to display its title on screen using the famous Indiana Jones typeface, like the font. Huh. Uh, typically, it's just like normal fonts yeah. or whatever, but this has like what you would see on the DVD cover. Um, and perhaps the only movie ever <laughs> to show its title partially obscured by an object. Uh, in this case, Kate Capshaw. <laughs> Uh, this is the first film to use THX's theater alignment program, which ensures mm-hmm. that cinema showing the film meets stringent technical and presentation standards. Because yeah. Lucas and Spielberg were very passionate about, like, film presentation. Of course, of course. So that's, like, the creation of THX. So that's, like, why in front of DVDs in, like, the 2000s, you were, like, the... Yes. Like, with the sound. Wow. You um, just made their ears bleed. Um, yeah, I remember I THX. made their ears bleed, but their hearts sang. <laughs> yeah, I remember THX with the the blue background. It was always on the on VHSs. Yeah, yeah. Um, for the human sacrifice scene, an animatronic dummy of the victim was programmed to realistically writhe in agony upon catching fire. Yeah. Steven Spielberg deemed the writhing quote too gruesome and added a sheet of flame in post production to obscure the dummy's movements uh, the moment it caught fire. Um, yeah. And actually, I remember thinking that like as soon as it gets fire, like a big gust of fire kind of blocks it. I think it was yeah. just like too scary. Because it was yeah, like realistic, it's just like writhing around. It, it like. looks. Wait, so there was no actual guy? 
at one point, but when it gets lowered into the fire, it, it's... Oh, okay. Because, yeah, it looks like the guy until that fire happens, and then, or pre-fire happening, but, like, you can see it start to melt. Yeah. Very, that made me the animatronic just, like, moving around and stuff. Very scary. Very um, disturbing. The final scene of the movie, in which Indy, Willie, and Shorty return to the Mayapur village, was filmed on the first day of principal photography. <laughs> The village scenes were shot in reverse since it was easier to defoliate the set rather than make it appear progressively more beautiful. That makes sense. Makes sense. So that's the trivia. Pretty pretty trivial, but interesting nonetheless. <laughs> so it's always something with Steven. First, always something with Steven. First it was the spaghettios and now yeah. Oh that's right, the spaghettios. <laughs> now it's I don't even know. Okay. Um so in terms of the critical reception, uh this is much higher than I thought it would be. On Rotten Tomatoes it has an eighty four percent. Um its little critical consensus <laughs> is as follows. It may be too dark for some, but Indian Jones and the Temple of Doom remains an ingenious adventure spectacle that showcases one of Hollywood's finest filmmaking teams in vintage form. I completely disagree. Oh. I do not find this ingenious in any way. Uh, and if anything, I think it is the exception to their, this filmmaking team's uh, success. Mm. Um, I am... Yeah. Uh, in terms of more modern reception, uh, on Letterboxd, it has a 3.6 out of 5. Uh, honestly, much higher than I expected, frankly. Um, I don't know if that's a spoiler still, for what I'm going to give it. It's but an, like, Indiana Jones movie, so it's, you know. <sighs> yeah, I guess. I don't know. I just... I just found it really boring. Like, there wasn't anything to sink my teeth into. And I also didn't really find, like, the adventure action very fun either. Because I didn't think it was as well constructed. You know what I mean? The, the, for starters, there wasn't as much adventure and action as the first one. For starters. And what was there wasn't as fun or interesting. I guess so. You know? One could say. Well, do you disagree? I don't know. I mean, I thought it was pretty... That's what the people adventure. want. They want the pot. They want the They want the, the debate. That's what they want. Well, you keep cutting me off. No, I'm not going to cut you off. I'm going to zip up my mouth. <laughs> But, um, no, I mean, I thought it was pretty adventurous. I mean, the the buggies seemed a little bit out of character. Um, but, you know. Well, mm -hmm. I guess not, because the first time it's... Or, no, the third one is with the... <laughs> is that the one with the bridge? Shut, shut up! No, okay, so the first one, there's the, the arc, and that's, you know, kind of mystical, magical, religious... And then this one's kind of mystical, magical, up. religious. Yeah, just yeah. And then the third one. What is the third one? The Holy Grail. Oh, the Holy Grail. Which is also mystical, magical, religious. Yeah. So they've all been mystical, magical, and religious. Yeah, I guess it. I guess it was in character. I guess the only one that isn't really out of character is the fourth, or isn't in character is like the fourth one because it's like alien. Yeah. Technically interdimensional beings. Also, is he really an archaeologist? Because I don't see him ever digging. <laughs> he's just some dude that in the first one they dig but he's not digging everyone else is digging yeah he doesn't really dig that much and he you know when they go to places he he's always looking he's more of a linguistic guy you know uh -huh. he's always looking at like the the what are the, what would you call them like written stuff but like their puzzles clues uh -huh. and not so much like the bones mm -hmm. so that's just my two cents on that I see <laughs> so, so favorite part of this movie what would you say uh why don't you go first i gotta think about this you gotta think uh honestly i would probably say short round just i think he's just a cute just kid him as a kid yeah i think he's a cute kid i think the actor i think he's a cute kid i think he does a good job um it's really sweet like he he talked about in interviews like i think when he was on tour like press tour for uh, mm -hmm. everything everywhere all at once oh people mm -hmm. obviously would ask him about stuff and he said working with, working with harris ford was like awesome he was so nice he even taught him how to swim what? he didn't know how to swim they were like at their like the hotel yeah and they and harris ford was in the pool and he was like like do you know how to swim he's like no and so he taught him how to swim what? and kind of taught him like about acting and stuff so he said like he had nothing but positive things to say about working with harrison ford so handsome Talented, a mentor, giving a carpenter. Uh, what? Oh, does he? While he while he was still like a struggling actor, he was also a carpenter to make money. A carpenter? No wonder 
that they keep putting him in Jesus reference like imagery. I, this is a, <laughs> no, I don't think they were making Jesus I, references I just, at all. Okay, it's very clear though. If you if you look for it. With if you if you look at it through that lens, you could see it. And mm-hmm. and oh, and he's nice. He's just like the perfect package. <laughs> Um, so I'm just going to say short round, I think. I just like him. He seems like a fun character. I really don't have much to say about this. Yeah. Well, I didn't know if I could say just a character, but... You can't. I think... You can do whatever you want. It's our podcast. Oh, shit. You're right. There's well, no rules. I'm thinking short Except round... the rules I care about. Can you shut up? <laughs> <laughs> I think definitely short round because he he's, oh. has, like, the same energy as the Goonies. You know, he's, like fun and silly and whatnot but specifically in the car chase scene like right after the bar or lounge scene um i don't know he, he just looks like he was having a fucking blast driving that also he's like 10 years old driving a car but <laughs> he's awesome <laughs> he's just like come on mr jones no time for <laughs> yeah what does he say like no time for lollygagging for love make for, oh, love, for love, love or something like that like <laughs> um he is so awesome that I'm not even angry that you copied my favorite thing. I was thinking of that, but I was also trying to mentally, you know, flip through the different mm-hmm. scenes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, and the elephants. I love the elephants. You love because, the elephants? Because okay. they had, like, little characters, you know? They were, like, they were so, fun, like, feisty and, like, you know? Not feisty, but they are so playful. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so... so what do you give this movie? Um, I don't know. I one out of ten. You gave the first one an eight. Mm. Mm. So like, a six is like okay. Seven is good. Eight's great. At least that's how I, I kind of view yeah, it. Yeah, I guess a six. A six? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Um, I think honestly... <sighs> I'm gonna go with six as well. Um, I feel, yeah, I feel like it's not. What, it's what okay. Is five? Like mediocre, yeah. forgettable. Mm. Not a lot of like big. Like that's the way I view it. Is like a four is bad. Well, maybe it is a five then because the only thing I remember is that chamber or is the is the cave. Yeah. Do you, you want to change your answer to five? To a five, the way uh, I view the way I view mediocre is like I mean, I like seen a six either. is a net positive. Like, do you think this is a net positive movie? No, yeah, yeah. Then I, a I, six, then a six, yeah. No, yeah, I'm gonna stick with the six, but but um, I mean, maybe it was just because I haven't seen it in a while, or that was like the big. Thing. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not asking. Yeah, that I, was like the big hullabaloo, like closing your eyes and whatnot, but uh, like the forbidden scene. <laughs> um, but that's really all I have remembered of this movie and yeah. probably will yeah i part of me honestly wants to give it a five or a four mm-hmm. but i i i don't know i guess my question is do do i think this is a net positive movie it's still indie there's still adventure he has yeah, a short round it's as a like, little sidekick i think i'm you know what he liberates child, child slaves you know it's, it's i've noticed it's in positive. my letterbox scores <laughs> there's a lot of inflation like, I'll give movies, like, I'll be, like, more generous. Like, movies that I think are really okay, I'll give higher scores to. Okay. And vice- I think... Um, I don't know. I don't know. Why don't you talk about something else about the movie while I think? Because I don't... I, I gotta think. I don't know what to put. I don't know what I want to give it. I don't know. I mean, we're pretty thorough. But I, I think the reason that I only think of The Cave is because there's not really much else. Like, they're not at the village for very long. And, like, they don't really walk around it or anything. They just go straight inside to a yeah. building. So, I... Okay, okay. Sorry to interrupt you. But I think I... I, I think <laughs> you I'm got just... It? You got I think it? I'm just going to do a six. And here's why. Because... But you are already said six. I know, but I'm staying... I almost changed it. Okay. But I'm staying with six and I'm explaining why I'm giving a six. Okay. Because I never explained my rating. Oh. We, we're not supposed to just come out of like nowhere and just go, six, and then walk away. I'm supposed to explain can, it. Can you not hurt their ears, please? Um, I'm giving it a six because like, despite my issues with like the script, the, the filmmaking is still competent, right? Like, I feel like if it's a bad movie, it's like I question like the filmmaker's skill. 
You know what yeah. I mean? Like the filmmaking is still like it's the perfectly serviceable filmmaking, and okay. there's still good stuff in it. And so the question is, I wouldn't say it's there's mediocre like either. Work, which there is, is, which is, I mean, was standard for the time. Visually okay, but like I guess the fact that people can paint such detailed <laughs> yeah. pictures on a large scale is is very I suppose yes like like when okay when they were doing the the bird's eye view in the cave like the, I know. it was a composite uh-huh. of all those people yeah. so they probably had to take a picture and then or have those people just stand there for I think that was real no they were not moving oh well, I don't know um can I finish explaining sure um but I also wouldn't say it's mediocre because I would say these are pretty big swings. You know what I mean? Like, that's why I feel like mediocre is just something that's like passionless. Like, it's something. I don't know if this is passionless. I don't think a lot of the choices are very good. I think it's a good movie with bad parts. I think that captures it's, a six perfectly. It's just so, so, I'm giving it a six out of 10. Uh, so, I think we can both agree since we both gave the first film a higher score than in terms of ranking. What did you give them? I gave it a seven. Oh, okay. But it's still higher than this. So can we both... I, I would imagine that, you know, in terms of ranking, the first one is above this one. Uh, well, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So so I don't need to ask you is what I'm saying for yeah. your ranking. Why are you looking at You confused? just did, first of all. And second of all, obviously the higher number goes first. I know. That's why I was just confirmed. <laughs> I, I was rhetorically asking. <laughs> oh. Well you, you, well, you explained it so much. It seemed like a real I'm so, I'm... So, I gotta be honest. You're, you're seeing us work out our marital problems on, on the thing. We're I'm not I'm hangry. I'm I'm getting a little cranky. I'm sorry. I'm I'm hungry. Oh, like genuinely? I'm genuinely getting a little cranky. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh-huh. I'm sorry for everyone if I've seemed cranky on. The, I'm I haven't taken my I had to take my medicine. I I told you I'm to hungry. Take it recording. I'm it's hot because we have the AC off for sound reasons. I'm just getting cranky. So why don't we wrap it up? Why didn't you take your medicine before? Because it wasn't time yet. But now it's past the but time. But now it's past the time. I know. So what but does it matter? I, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's it for this week's episode of Now That's What I Call a Franchise. Next week, we'll be watching the next film in the franchise, the 1989 film, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Viviana, where oh where can they find us? <laughs> As you may know, you guys can find us wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Franchise Podcast. We know you have many podcasting options, and we thank you for choosing us. Peace out. Bye.